relying on your own body to come up with the answers to lean you in the right direction of what's going to be right for you. And that's exactly what Ben has done mm-hmm. with his knees. Like Ben would not be knees over toes, guys. He didn't go through hell. I thought I was a failure in life at age 20. Damn. Failure man. at life. Wow. Derek's 43. We just put out a book together. <laughs> if you're in your 20s or your 30s or mm-hmm. whatever, you have time. Yeah. You're not like, you, you, you're not because you're 30 or whatever years old or 35 years old. You have time to make shifts and meet the right people. What do you think helped you not lose belief in yourself? Because it sounds like you you thought you were a loser. Your knees were banged up. Um, it seemed like everything was just like no, nothing was going to come true for you of, out of any of the things that you wanted to do. I just want to be an example. You know, I want I want I want to be an example for my sons and I want them to have somebody that they respect and look up to. Kids are going to be kids. They're going to be, oh, you can't do that because you're not this, you're not that. So how do you keep their their belief alive? And like, how do you block out all the noise? Mark sent me one of his favorite hamstring exercises, that dumbbell. That thing is golden, that sort of dumbbell RDL where the yep. intention is not necessarily the weight but the length mm-hmm. that quality when you can strengthen through length through the stretch it appears to be exponential for reducing injuries that's the exciting thing how old are you i'm 29 turn 30 in september yeah you're gonna be one of the best i mean you already are one of the best all-around athletes on the planet <laughs> everything you said just completely checked out to be wrong but <laughs> <laughs> power project family how's it going now on this podcast Mark, Andrew, and I, we talk about fasting a lot. We talk about the ketogenic diet and a lot of different types of diets. But Bub's Naturals has a product. They have the collagen protein, which is amazing. They have these apple cider vinegar gummies, which are like crack. But they have <laughs> they are. these yeah, they have these MCT oil powder packets that, ah, I've never used to do this. But in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll put it in coffee. And the smoothness, number one, in terms of the mixing is amazing. But the consistency of my energy through the day because of the MCT oil powder is peak. Andrew. Mm. How's your experience with that? Yeah, no, that's exactly it. It's like the best way to start the day. Uh, you're satiated, you're energized, and you're just ready to crush the day. Uh, so if you guys want to get in on this MC2 oil powder, head over to bubsnaturals.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Again, Bubs Naturals promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. We're talking about um, athletes and we're talking about the importance, not even just athletes, but just people in general, the importance of diet and what it could potentially improve. Um, we were watching uh, Donaher, the uh, the coach, uh, Donaher Death Squad, and uh, he was kind of saying that he didn't think that nutrition mattered that much because of what he's seen. You know, he's seen so many of his athletes be great without adhering to a particular protocol, but there could be some flaws in that. Yeah. I mean, I've lived as a terrible athlete and now at least for my sport what people would call a freak athlete so what i noticed is that the best natural athletes didn't ever have a need to diet Mm -hmm. so it's kind of associating the greatest genetic freaks with with you know less good diets and then the guys who naturally aren't as athletic are trying to get there Mm -hmm. so there's no doubt that your nutrition is going to affect your body and could that athlete be even better sure they could but why change something if you don't need to change it, you know? That's always the thing about, like, trying to figure out what's optimal. I remember at Westside, at Westside Barbell, they used to say, like, they did some surveys of the guys, which who knows how the guys filled them out and stuff like that. They probably didn't care. <laughs> but uh, Dave mm-hmm. Tate surveyed them to see how much protein they ate and to see how often they ate. And the numbers were terrible. These guys, these are these are 300-pound dudes, you know, squatting over 1,000 pounds, bench mm-hmm. pressing over 800 pounds, and it was rare for anybody to have eaten more than about 150 grams of protein in a day. And then like their carbs, they didn't really have any, they didn't even know how many, like they didn't know a lot of stuff. You would figure they would know, they would have a lot of uh, information on, on what they did, but they, they at least knew approximately how much meat they ate. So they were able to say, yeah, I think I eat about this much. I eat like two burgers a day or something, but their diets were horrific, but that doesn't mean that having a horrific diet is going to make you a great power lifter. Yeah. And the, actually, I'm curious about this. Mr. Infinity, what's your actual name, though? <laughs> Derek. Okay, yeah. I want people to understand. I call you bleep Mr. Infinity out. all the time. <laughs> Not just surely bleep that You bleep it, and it says Mr. Infinity. People right. can't know his real identity. No. Yeah, I'm rather than that. <laughs> but I think that you'd have really good insight on this because, like, you look like you're 26. How old are you, actually? I'm 43. I'll be 44 this year. You're 44 this year. So I'm curious, like, what is your take on 
like number one nutrition for athletes, but then also how do you think it affects longevity? Because obviously mm. if people look up videos on your Instagram, yeah. they look up the things that you're doing with your single arm hangs and all these this crazy shit at 43 years old, yeah. you're moving like a guy in his mid twenties. Yeah, so you. how big of a deal do you think it is for an elite level athlete and for yourself? Yeah, it's funny, man. One, one thing I do not talk a lot about is diet and nutrition. Um, Cause somebody, so a lot of, so many people have so, uh, it's almost religious for a lot of people, mm, man. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so many people, when they learn something, they hold on to it. Like it's almost so, so really I try to stay away from that, uh, conversation, man. But I'll talk about it here if you guys want to. But um, but I just learned over my life, man. Everybody is at a different consciousness level, man. And depending on where you at consciously, it kind of like correlates to where you where your diet is at, you know. Um, so for me personally, all I can do is talk for myself because everybody's different. Everybody's body's different. Everybody come from a different climate. Everybody's background is different ancestrally. So um, and everybody in, in food in general is so much money involved in it. And and it's so much marketing involved. Everybody is wants to like sell their products and say, my diet is better and then you need this and you need that. And it's it's so it's so convoluted, mm -hmm. you know? And um me, I, I just I try to like Ben said yesterday, man, the future is unwritten. As as we go along, we are creating a future as we go. Mm -hmm. And and all three of you guys, y'all on the leading edge of creation right now. And I feel like I try to tune into my intuition and my consciousness as much as I can mm. for me to know what to eat, when to eat, and how to eat. Um, and I know that's, that's a lot to say. Uh, I'm trying to like almost avoid the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like this is so <laughs> in, man. <laughs> but but I, I, I mean, for longevity, man, you got to be conscious about what you put in your body. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't you can't be walking around eating starches and going to McDonald's and and eating a lot of toxic foods and think that you're going to be able to think clearly, think you'll better um, your body's going to um, have the output that you want. You know, you got to you got to be conscious. And I'm not saying you got to have a perfect diet. And I'm not saying that as when you're young, like I'm thinking when we was all young, we probably could eat whatever we wanted and get out there and, and hoop and jump mm -hmm. and flip. You know, but. Mm -hmm. But man, that shit adds up, man. You mean like a compound interest? Either way, back or forward, it's gonna add up. So, so that's kind of my. <laughs> so you pretty much stay away from processed foods. <laughs> you stay away from processed foods is the big thing oh, that yeah. I heard there, right? I, I yeah, for me, I could talk about my personal diet. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I um, I do an intermittent fasting. Okay. I um, I uh. I do. I try not to eat a lot. Of, I'm not saying I don't eat, but I mean I eat whatever. But yeah. I, I try not to eat a lot of processed foods. Um, not, try to stay away from like a lot of starches. You know that that didn't really work for my body. What does mm -hmm. fasting help you with? For for you personally, <clears throat> fasting helps me um, just to be think clear. Um, well, my body's not busy digesting foods, man. I'm like, all that blood I can use mm -hmm. to be thinking. You know, because a lot of times when you're digesting, when you when your body's all constantly digesting foods. And that blood, your blood got to go somewhere. You believe to go in blood, it's going here. And we got a second brain in our gut. So it's going to be down there in our gut. Like, you know what I'm saying? So so fasting helps me just think clearly, be better, more athletic, um, just get dialed in, you know? And um, I got two sons. I work. I run three businesses. I got a gym. So got two it's, sons. Just, it's just, yeah, I got two. I got a 19 and 16 year old. And so I don't got time to be thinking about food all day. You know what I'm saying? And, and I go out and get nature and, and deep breathing and meditation. And I feel like, People can't sell those, so they're not marketed. Mm -hmm. But those, to me, those are form of those. That's nutrition. When I'm going out, like when Mark, you doing your walks, man. It's it's ninety nine point nine percent of what's going on we can't even see. And so there's things in the air that we picking up when you breathing. You know what I'm saying? And so and so I, t I I try to tap in and tune into those um those subtle energies. I gotcha. I like to say so. Yeah, your, I know y'all looking at me crazy as fuck right now. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, it seemed to push me into a corner, man. Right? So I'm uh, fighting hey, out right now. <laughs> everything you said just completely checked out to be wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> what's your uh, what's your education background? Um, basketball player. And I I went. I mean, I I have a college degree from I in Indiana University. Um, just communication degree, and then just the self taught man. You know what I mean? Pretty much self. -taught. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think. You can see that the life experiences, I think, are outshining the education that you probably had because 
of what you, the stuff that you just said was very intuitive. Like, and it, it was awesome. And it's stuff that resonates with me a lot. Um, most of, most of what everything is made up of is space. Mm. It's not made up of stuff. It's not made up of things. You know, the, the atmosphere, the universe, space itself. I mean, it's enormous, you know? So I find uh, the, that line of thinking to be really like fascinating. But what I also find fascinating when you said intuition, how you kind of like, you're, I guess, relying on your own body to come up with the answers to lean you in the right direction of what's going to be right for you. And that's exactly what Ben has done mm -hmm. with his knees. You know, he probably cried a lot, probably complained a lot, probably was really frustrated, probably a dark time in your life. I mean, I, I sometimes don't think people understand when your health is compromised, especially towards something that you really truly love and enjoy. Um, de depression, anxiety, all mm -hmm. kinds of things can kind of seep in at those times because you place such high value on playing a game like basketball uh, or something like that. And when those things are taken away from you, it's really hard, you know, but in that case, your health is compromised, right? Your knees hurt. So when your knees hurt and you have all that pain, it's harder to think more clearly. Mm -hmm. If you're eating cupcakes and donuts and snacks and processed foods often, and you're also getting overweight, you're not what you used to be. You haven't run in a long time. You haven't sprinted in a long time. Your body doesn't work the same way. Maybe you tweaked your knee or your back or whatever it might be. Just on this downward trajectory. And then how are you supposed to have intuition at that point? Like you obviously at that point, you don't know what's good. For, you don't know what's good for you. If you did, you would like work towards making a change. If you clean up your diet and you start to eat foods that are more natural, it's a lot easier to be more in tune so with what your body's trying to speak so to you because your body is trying to yell at you. And the whole time that you dealt with your knees for many, many years, your body kept telling you over and over again, dude, you have all the answers inside you somewhere. Mm. You better figure this shit out yourself. Yeah. Um, someone told me once that it's like your body's giving you a communication, you know? And so are you shutting it up or are you mm. listening to it? And so it can be like that with your knee. So if your response to the knee pain is ice, painkiller, you know what I mean? Mm. Avoid it. So you're, it's almost, you're, you're telling your body to shut up and numb I, it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's similar with the food. Now I can verify that, um, Derek is insanely disciplined with his diet and where we actually connected is because we would see each other playing pickup basketball or something like that. This was 10 years ago when I would like try to get playing, hurt my knee. <laughs> I was <laughs> fat you know you're a little, little knock needy you good yeah. though <laughs> um, um, but then we would see each other at like the health food store always so he's been he's been the most health conscious guy I know about what he puts in his body and mm -hmm. I would know because even once we were working out together it was like we'd be like yeah talking about diet or whatever like oh yeah I had a, che a cheap meal he'd be like yeah me too he'd be like yeah I had like an almond co flour cookie last night and I'd be like oh, I had like pizza and ice cream you know? <laughs> and so and so I know that he's, yeah, he's the most conscious I've seen about what he puts in his body. So any feedback his body's giving him, yeah, he's pretty in tune with that. And he gets sunlight every day. You know what I mean? Um, those are the two things I can verify is he mm. doesn't put junk into his body, gets sunlight every day. I've never actually seen him eat though. <laughs> is this man quite literally living off of air <laughs> <laughs> he's living off the stuff we can't see none of my friends have either my mom and dad we've never no one has actually seen him eat we just know uh, uh, we that he's, right we just know that he's not putting any junk into his body right. that's for sure so that was for me that was a major it's who you surround yourself do you with. use some yeah. intermittent fasting too mm -hmm. Um, or do you just kind of end well, up there because you work all, right, all day? I'll, I'll give you mine. So Derek's was like 15 minutes and we actually didn't establish anything that he eats. Okay. <laughs> mine, mine will go 30 seconds of, of exactly what I eat. About four um, me. I do this. I do a, it's called strong coffee. It's like 15 grams of collagen mm -hmm. protein. Yeah, and it's only have, 120 yeah. milligram of caffeine. So it's like. We had the creator on the mm -hmm. show, right? Uh, Sweet. Adam Adam, Roth he, he told me to tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he cool told me dude. to say hi. Yeah. And. So I have one or two scoops of that in the morning. That mm. way, I, I don't want to have to stop and eat breakfast. I don't want to wait. It, that thing's instant. I'm, I'm lazy. I want to just get working. You know what yeah. I mean? And so that's what I do in the morning. And then we go pretty hard in the morning because we, we film, go, we work out. It's, it's we go kind, hard. Yeah. And so, and we'll have guests come in. And so once that finishes, I actually go to like a local place and I get a steak and eggs. I either do that or I get like a rotisserie chicken. Mm. 
that one of those two. Because either way, either the rotisserie chicken, I can just grab it, go home, mm-hmm. or the steak and eggs, I can sit there and then be like catching up on my mess, like start scripting for the next day. I'm always planned for each day. So the instant coffee with 15 to 30 gram collagen protein, 10 ounce steak with three eggs or a whole rotisserie, but it's from the health food store. So it's not like that huge rotisserie. It's like a medium <laughs> sized rotisserie with paleo. Have you seen that paleo hot sauce? Paleo. Hmm. Paleo something hot sauce. It's pretty good. Okay. They put some honey in there. So Ooh. it's actually kind of like a sweet. It's not that spicy. Yeah. And then I think I know which I forget what that's called too. Yeah, Paleo it's... Chef, I believe it's called. Yeah. Okay. And, and then for dinner, what I do, my strategy with dinner is whatever like the protein is, whether we're eating out or ordering in or cooking at home or some I just have two servings of the protein, which mm-hmm. makes me less likely to crave the starches. So I don't do any starches. And then I like to study and see what's the seasonal fruit. And I'll pound like like a, a plate mm. for like a king of fruit. That's like my right. dessert every night. That's smart. And I'll pound fruit for dessert. The, but you focus on like what season is like this season for this fruit. Right. And so that's the fruit you use. Right. So right now, <laughs> right now, oranges, smart. kiwis, pears, and they taste so good because they're in season. So yeah. right now you actually have like a lot of citrus, pears, kiwis. Um, and I'm just like a king, just, you know. Delicious. And, yeah. Now, whatever the vegetable is, is whatever you know whatever we're having <clears throat> if i'm craving it i'll have some of it so it's not like i always have vegetables but it's not like i don't have any vegetables mm-hmm. you know um there's that whole debate going on right now about whether you should or whether they're harmful and i i can see both sides so i'm just like i have some vegetables in there yeah. that's what but that's eat your vegetables man so like, there it wasn't it wasn't 30 <laughs> seconds but there's literally everything i eat yeah. and what i do is i don't cheat in my diet at all i went the whole last year there was no cheat Dang. meal ever so, and I've rolled into this year. I love it. I, I don't want to go back. Um, and I know I'll have to with my kid. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean? A couple years, yeah. Kid, dad, you want to go for ice cream after the game? Mm. You know, just made my first basket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to go have ice cream. So you I say, no, son, we're celebrating <laughs> steak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going over to Mark's house. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I'm, I'm preparing for that because I need mm. to not have it on an addiction basis. I don't want to fall back in if, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So an interesting thing though, I'm curious, like number one, when it comes to the fasting thing and the focus, I can, I agree with you guys both massively on that. I notice like when I'm fasted, even when I'm doing martial arts or when I'm working, I can just I zone in on what I'm doing much easier. So that's, that makes so much sense. What I'm curious, cause both you guys are basketball players. So, um, do you, when you guys do pick a basketball or whatever, do you have anything before you play? Do you have electrolytes? Do you have anything before you play? Are you going into this cardiovascularly like <laughs> intensive some game water, fasted yeah. yeah i remember ben used to say man this probably years ago he's like i want to play hungry i want to play hungry literally you know and <laughs> yeah and i felt i was like all right we're about to play hungry then you know so uh so we don't i don't you know i might get some tea like i'm big on this uh yerba mate tea oh yeah i like yerba mate yeah yeah, yeah yeah i do yerba mate tea that gives me a little buzz and i, I feel better <laughs> light man like I, I tell my 19 year old son man go out there on football field play hungry and in the less the less you got to digest, man. The more that blood is on your limbs and faster and quicker and jumping, like you know what yeah. I'm saying. So and he and he uh, led the state in receiving yards this year. Shout Ooh, out going to D1. Williams. Yeah, he's going D1 football. He's a good man. kid too. He's a man. hard worker. Yeah, yeah. I'm thankful for my son. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, he's a man. grateful ben kid. Ben stays shredded though kid. too. I wanted to say that about his diet, man. His diet, man. If so somebody's looking for a, for a, for a diet program, mm-hmm. then I've never seen this guy not with a. 15 pack <laughs> <laughs> just put a mirror right here because that's Derek mm-hmm. but that's that's who you surround yourself with yeah so I can't not have a six pack <laughs> yeah. next to him yeah. but so this is the cool thing though because a lot of powerlifters and bodybuilders are <clears throat> listening these are athletes that typically they're like before I hit the gym I mean, I'm gonna eat like you know two or three hours beforehand I know it's a different type of sport but the fact that you guys are doing such an intense sport fasted uh, people it's good to realize outside of that you're you're eating a lot like maybe i don't know what time you guys eat but what do you eat you eat a substantial amount that keeps gets you ready to perform the next day it's not like you're now on an empty stomach literally you're working from the calories you had the night before yeah and that's that's what i do too because people are like how do you do that fast well i ate Mm -hmm. (laughs) i still ate last night Right, so I can still perform the next day, and it's cool that you guys are doing that same thing and performing at a high level. And it's not like a, a typical bro set where you're burning like a couple hundred calories. They're playing basketball mm-hmm. for a couple hours and really burning some calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you and Mark would be better. Like I wouldn't try to judge that for a powerlifter or a bodybuilder. Of course, yeah. Mister Infinity, yes, sir. 
<laughs> love saying it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you could get a little bit closer to the mic too, Derek. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. What were you doing before you ran into Ben? Um, that's a good question, man. I um, obviously, man, I had, I had my kids, man, I was raising them. Um, went through, man, I went through a lot in my life, man. And me and Ben had probably been knowing each other for maybe like, I don't know, it's been time goes so fast. Maybe two, over 10. Over 10 years. Um, yeah, we started, like, like Ben said, we started off just kind of playing a pickup game and ran at each other at this uh, health food store. And then, um, so I, I was a play basketball overseas. I was in Norway for, for quite some time. And then had had a, like a little roller coaster ride of a life and ended up in Florida. And then I was a P teacher, man, just bouncing around. Roller coaster around. of a life. What does that mean? You just didn't feel like you had direction at that time? Or was there something else going on? Yeah, man, I don't know how deep y'all want to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> we have time, hey, man. We're, we, we got time. time we got time, time, man. We're unveiling your story, bro. Yeah. Okay. Um, Whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, so I don't want to take over the conversation, but I mean, I, I, um, I mean, I just went through a lot. I had a two sons. Uh, went, I, after my after I played um, professional basketball, I came back home, and my girl, my son's mother, took him down to Florida, and it was like a little rough, so she wouldn't let me see him. And then I mm. so I just kind of st- st- stayed in my car for like just six months because I was like, man, I, I got to raise my son because I didn't have Damn. a father, and my father didn't have a father. So I was like, man, fuck it, I'm just going, I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to go to Florida and figure it out. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of like worked at a, uh, uh, just delivered pizzas. You know what I'm saying? Stayed in my car until I figured it out, and then, uh, and then she got she got a husband, and and then just got just this 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 craziness. I got ended up getting locked up a couple times because I have I suspended my license because I couldn't pay child support. So it was just it was just a rocky road, man. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, and then I luckily got a PE teaching job. You know what I mean? I always I always I always like train basketball players on the side because that's one thing I could always do is like. People see me play on the court, be like, man, can you train my son or can you do that? So I always kind of did that for a little extra money. But uh, but yeah, man, that's that's really it, man. And then um, I was a PE teacher um, before when, before I, I started working with being an ATG. And this was maybe like five, six years ago when I, when I started with an ATG. So I um, was able to eventually get with my son, start, start, start uh, being a father like I wanted to be. She uh, changed my, my, my son's names are one and 11. And um, my son's mother ended up changing their name. So I had to go fight to that. And then luckily she changed them back to my, to, to one and 11. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm like, I said, I don't want to take over your podcast, man, but okay. it's a, it's a long story, man. Like I, uh, I went through a lot, man. So I feel like um, my attention was always like good, you know? And I feel like that's why, um, I'm here today. Your in, and, intention or attention? In, intention. Intention. Okay. Always, and I never had like bad intentions. So I feel like that's why God allowed Ben to come into my universe. You guys to come to my universe and things to happen, man. So I can kind of get back on the upswing of life. You know what I'm saying? So you yeah. just weren't like doing things that were maybe optimal towards you uh, being able to progress forward, rather than like you you weren't like necessarily doing anything negative though either, right? What you mean? For well, what? you were just saying like you didn't have bad intentions. So no, your intentions were good, but you just uh, maybe I just weren't. Did, I didn't think I have a role model in my life, man. I came, I had money when I came back from overseas playing basketball and I just blew it on mm. going out, bought a new car, bought a house and just like, just, just, just a fool, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I just didn't, I didn't know. I just didn't know. So I uh, just had to just take, you know, as you grow and you just learn, you learn mm-hmm. what not to do and you, you just uh, work your way up, you know what I mean? Consciously, you know, that's why I say, being conscious of being awareness is so important. You know what I'm saying? I have, I have a, more of an awareness of a cause and effect. You know, cause and effect is real. So, What was the pivot point that allowed you to become a teacher? Um, just, just opportunity. Somebody was like, just gave me an opportunity to be a PE teacher. You know, I was like, man, they asked me if I wanted to teach. I was like, man, I do PE, but that's about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I had fun with it. Man, I was like in, the, in the, one of the roughest schools in the, uh, St. Pete, a uh, little middle school, but it was fun, man, playing, hanging out with all these little little rough kids. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Bay Point, you know, I don't know if you heard of Bay Point. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sounded to me like that may have been something that changed your life, like learning that you could coach and you could teach. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I always, like, um, I feel like I always had that in me to be able to, I always want to see people do well. I always want to, like, inspire and help people and, like, 
when I'm around you, man, I want you to max out. I don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying? So that I think that's just like innately in me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I appreciate you saying that more. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't help but like smile when we see you. Like you're just like, oh shit, it's Mr. Infinity. Mr. Infinity. <laughs> Let's go. But you know, yeah, as, you, as if somebody gets you know arrested, thrown in jail, like that's kind of like they have that stick or that stamp on them, the little stigma. Like people say, like, oh, I can't get a job because I have this on my record. Yeah. So how did you pick yourself up? Was it just somebody that gave you an opportunity at that middle school, or did you do anything else <clears> to? I don't know, I guess try to like cement and let people know like, no, I'm a good dude. I just happen. Yeah, to- man. It was, I mean, I got, it, I didn't do nothing bad against you. Mm-hmm. I got, I got, I, I had suspended license and my son's mother, uh, I mean, my, my son's mother's husband at the time had a connection with the police force. So they, they intentionally was seeking me out to kind of just keep, like they just kept, cause I had, I didn't keep up with the child support. So they just kind of kept every time, every time I was riding, they, they knew Mm-hmm. How to find me? How to, you know what I'm saying? It was it was more. It wasn't like I was out here doing nothing mm-hmm. <laughs> crazy, but uh, but yeah. And so, but to answer your question, man, I feel like I just feel like man, the universe. Like man, I'm telling you, I'm like a lot of stuff that goes on out here, man. We can't see, and I and I feel like we got we got things working for us that we can't see too. And I feel like I mean I'm protected by a lot, you know. And I'm just thankful, you know. what I'm saying I'm, I'm just thankful. Yeah. One thing I find pretty amazing, though, and I think a lot of people are going to like get a lot from what things you just talked about. It's like you're 43 right now. You're doing a lot of cool shit right now at 43 years old. That's starkly different than the story that you're talking about when you were younger. Like, I can't even like knowing you, I can't like imagine those situations because of how like the, the stuff you can do in the gym, the stuff you're teaching people with Ben and the, the individual you are right now, yeah. the fact that you've gone through all of that and you're here doing this right now, that's fucking sick. Yeah, and exactly. that that's inspiring as hell. You know what I mean? And I think that can also help people understand, like, if you're in your 20s or your 30s mm-hmm. or whatever, you have time. Yeah. You're not like, you, you, you're not because you're 30 or whatever years old or 35 years old. You have time to make shifts and meet the right people uh, to uh, to spur you into the direction of the person that you, you ideally want to be. So yeah. that's sick. That's so true, man. You learn from struggle, man. Like, yeah. like Ben would not be knees over toe guys. He didn't go through hell. Like, I'm sure he went through a lot to be who he is today. You know what I mean? You guys the same, man. You don't, you don't, I mean, the further you go down, the higher you go up. And it's just like, man, you got to, you got to go through it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I'm going to continue to go through it. And I'm going to continue to fight and learn and grow. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's just, that's how we built, you know? So I I just, I appreciate you saying that for real. But, uh, and, and, and I and I hope people are inspired because, man, time really is like, it's just a man-made concept, man. It's only it's only, not affecting you. Only only <laughs> only now exists, man. And so once you understand that, man, like understand you creating your reality right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? You always at the leading edge of creation. You know what I'm saying? And I keep telling myself, man, like, you know, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, mm-hmm. I, I still I still get <laughs> knocked over the head mm-hmm. with life, you know? But yeah. I think pain is like the ultimate mentor. What do you think of that, Ben? <clears throat> well, definitely makes you appreciate you know when you're not you know so if i hadn't you know been through stuff yeah there wouldn't be an ease over toes guy you know i mean i wouldn't be passionate about teaching people to do backward sled you know so i don't know why that is but in Derek's case i mean you you won man like i got emotional just thinking i didn't know any of that stuff and uh just the idea of like not being able to be with my kid you know, mm. that gets me pretty emotional to oh, think about. Yeah, mm-hmm. when it, whenever and <laughs> I can't watch, I would stuff have done something TV. bad. <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah, like yeah, like yeah, um, the fact that you got through that, and I never would have guessed that because he has a great relationship with his kids, two amazing kids. One of them's going on D one scholarship, but I, I see them. They, they work hard. They're super respectful. They are not normal kids. You know what I mean? Like that's th- that's the lottery we all want to win. You know what I mean? Is our kids being um, respectful and having integrity and purpose and drive and and he's with his kids now. So, I mean, you you won. Yeah, so. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pain. I think is it's a it's a great teacher. You know, it gives us a lot of wisdom. And I think uh, you know maybe for you with the way that you uh, grew up, you were like, well, I don't want to repeat that cycle. I don't want to see that happen with my own children. And so I think it's great. That you're able to, even though the circumstances weren't the most optimal, you're able to still make the most of it. 
Yeah. And life is long, and you hear it time and time again about parents that uh, they lose opportunities to be around their children or they get distant from them, but then they come back later on. You know, life is, it can be short and certain things happen sometimes, but it also can be long. Like if you're staying healthy, it's a long mm, life. Yeah. Mm. And you may have wronged a bunch of people or you might have done a lot of wrong or people may have wronged you. But if you can just figure out a way to hang in there the best you can and to try to start to learn from any mistakes yeah. that you made or some of the people around you have made uh, over a period of time, you can start to head in the right direction and your story could end up like Mr. Infinity's. Yeah, thank you, man. I think it's all about perspective, you know. Yeah, it's all about perspective. How you because you can spin any situation how you want to, man. And I just I choose to be grateful, you know what I mean? But and, uh, and now you're you're trying to be we talk about he's trying to be a you know, a role model for his kids, you know what I mean? And yeah. how he didn't have that. So he didn't have that role model. I went through struggles, but I was lucky enough to have that. Both my parents in their own ways were, <laughs> you know my parents. Perfect. They're unbelievable role models for me. So whatever stuff I went through um, had the right role models. So I was able, as Mark said, to learn from it. And that's, to me, whatever is coming in at you in life, if you then learn how to handle that, now you get more powerful to help other people. So it sounds to me like now Derek gets to teach and help a lot of other people. I thought I was a failure in life at age 20. Damn. Failure man. at life. Wow. Derek's 43. We just put out a book together. <laughs> so, his, so his first big book. <laughs> and right now it's number two on Amazon, y'all yeah, said. Number something two. like that. Yeah. So, Jesus. Yeah. ATG for life. We'll yeah. link it below. Who knows <laughs> what he will go on to accomplish. We were just using in there something that he's, you know, Boom, he got a sample whipped up. I mean, he's 43. So it, it, for me thinking I was a failure at 20, mm. it would have been nice to see this podcast. What, um, what, uh, why do you think you thought that? Why do you think you were a loser at 20? Well, wanted to be a basketball player. Didn't get any recruitment out of high school. So boom, you have to go to college. So I was a failure. Mm. No college recruitment. Um, mm. gnarly knee history. I couldn't even go to school my senior year. I was, uh, I was on a walker. Let's say that it's, uh, you know, 20 years from now or, or 18 years from now and your son's on his way to, you know, he's been thinking about college, but he's not getting accepted to college. He's bummed. Like, what would you tell him? I don't know how to answer that exactly because I'm actually educating my kid. So I have an article. It's not, it's not public. I'll put it out public after this so you guys can read it. But I've actually written up exactly I'm going to educate my own kid. And just like how our program, like what we do in the gym is online, I'm putting it online. So this gives me some time. He's one. This gives me time to get it accredited. I'm already working on getting it. Like So that's accredited. And <laughs> Let's go. I can't have him. There's <laughs> yeah. certain things about it. The levels of this game. Oh, it depends on a different level. Sick, it'll, and it'll be, the curriculum will go out this summer. It'll just be a free website the first couple of years because I don't know what service people are going to need. And so anyone can follow the journey of what I'm setting up for my kid, just learning from the things I went through so that there is no such thing as graduating thinking you're already a failure. Mm. So um, mm. hopefully he'll be in a very different- I guess that was my main point. Like your, your expectations of yourself were, um, not that they were like too high, they were just a little delusional. Like, college, like going to college- and not going to college doesn't determine mm -hmm. whether you're a winner or a loser. Yeah. It'll feel that way when you put all of your uh, value into, like, I have to go to college. Mm -hmm. I have to get a Division One yeah. scholarship. These are things that must happen because that's what I've seen other people do, and that's how they're successful. So that's mm -hmm. going to be my determining factor for mm -hmm. success. But we yeah. know what a horrible recipe that can be. Mm -hmm. Uh, having somebody else's uh, measures of success be our own. It's like a, yeah. a huge problem. So I hope people just kind of understand that. Um, I think I think the easiest way to not feel like a loser is to not ever really think about it in the first place. However, if you're kicked in the balls enough when you're young and you're, you know, you the odds are stacked against you, you will probably feel like a loser at some point. What about you? I mean, you are... Hardest working guy that I know over time. Um, like I work hard right now, but like you've been, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hardest working guy I know. Never seen you actually say, as Derek said, like with intentions, 
never actually seen like a bad intention out of you. You know what I mean? Um, so somewhere along the lines, you found something you were interested in mm. and, and you let that drive you. So I think if you put, if you have the right mentors around you, you saw from the moment I came here the first time since then, I was like, I want you to be my mentor. You know what I mean? Right. And you've been sending me stuff ever since. But you saw my, my frame of mind was, wow, this is a good mentor. Wow, Derek, mm -hmm. I, I need you to be my training partner. You know what I mean? So as a go-to, people can find mentors, as Derek and I say, who are achieving the, th the results you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, then you know, maybe before that, find something you're interested in and then find mentors within that. And that, that kind of thinking totally changed my life. What do you think helped you not lose belief in yourself? Because it sounds like you so you thought you were a loser, your knees were banged up. Um, it seemed like everything was just like no, nothing was going to come true for you of, out of any of the things that you wanted to do. How were you able to like? What did you hold on to? Were you like I'm smart or I'm fast or I'm there's some skill set or something? <laughs> I mean <laughs> that kept you to be resilient. I knew I was pretty skilled at basketball, so if I could somehow figure out how to get my body able to play able to be athletic I think that's really important though because i think that sometimes people they don't work they don't work on a skill and yeah. if you work on a skill and you think that you even developed one even if you didn't develop one to the level that you really wanted to you still have a skill set that allows you to believe in yourself yeah. a little bit more than the next person probably yeah but honestly what jumped to my mind is the simple fact that my parents they weren't telling me to get a plan b <laughs> i mean mm. i had no business still trying to get a basketball scholarship mm. you know my whole story is that I, I actually ran out of eligibility. I was too old, but I was I was actually succeeding. I got a D1 scholarship yeah. at 23 years old. I've never heard of that happening. That's you know, true. usually. Wow. But my parents, I was sitting at the dinner table with my dad last week, and he admitted to me that he genuinely did not think it was possible for me to dunk, even though I still thought this program, you know what I mean? You know what it's like when you're searching for that perfect <laughs> yeah. program and, and finally some stuff broke through. He never thought I would dunk, but he actually never told that to me, never told it to my mom. My parents never, they would still make me work hard. So I was out of high school, I was working hard, but they never told me, you're not going to be a basketball player. Mm. And my wife is the same way. I think my wife believed in me more than I did. And so I was very fortunate to have people like that around me. Not every parent is going to let you still be, you know, thinking you're going to be a basketball player when it doesn't make any sense. You yeah. Know? And, and actually, when Derek and I started working together, first thing he was like, the world needs to know about this, you know? I was like, really? Yeah. He, he, he beat that into me. The world needs to know about what's happening in this gym. Mm -hmm. um, so Derek believing in my you know, professional stuff, my wife still thinks I'm like, could beat Michael Jordan in his prime one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> she genuinely, she, she would somehow he'll get lucky. <laughs> like, <laughs> she, <laughs> go out. she actually cool, believes in me to that degree. Wow. And then my parents were amazing enough not to have their judgment. I think my mom also believed I could do anything too, but my dad never thought I would dunk a basketball, um, but he never told me that. So that was, I can't take full credit for that. Why didn't I, you asked me, why didn't I give up on myself? Did I have some inner belief in myself? Clearly the people around me did. Yeah. What about for yourself? What? Did you have a mentor or something to hold on to that allowed you to just continue to pursue like heading in the right direction? Yeah, uh, I definitely answered that. But one thing I can say about Ben, man, Ben, once he has a vision in his mind, it's, it's going to happen. It might take a year, five years, 10 years, but I feel like he's not going to stop. He's like a pit bull. He's not mm -hmm. going to let go until it happens. You know what I'm saying? And that's, I love being around people like that. You know what I mean? Ben played uh, basketball together for the first time forever. We always used to play on opposite teams, but it was nice because I know you know when you got a partner that's no, they gonna bring it with you. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's just like I just wanted to say that man about being like ever since I known him, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, he's always like just you could tell he got a vision. You know what I mean? And and people know like in in our area Clearwater for five ten years, people knew being they didn't know it was gonna be knees over toe guy, but they knew Ben was gonna be successful, man. You know what I'm saying? And he hasn't even started yet. But um, but yeah. Appreciate but, that. But for me, um, man, I'm telling you, I had a hard knock life, man. My city, where I'm from, it's just like, if I go back today, 
everybody's doing the same thing in the same bars and the same clubs and in the same like and it's like talking is talking about the same sports same chicks like you know what i'm saying so it was a blessing for me to to, to be able to leave um and then I just looked up people, man. Like Ben is one of my mentors. Like now you guys are mentors. So I I, I did seek out. I read. I read a lot of books. Um, just like I just read a lot, man. I just had to reach outside of myself just to kind of to find find mentors, but not not close proximity, man. I I, I learned a lot of what not to do. I tell you that. Yeah. You know the the cool things um on the podcast like past few months we've been talking a lot about like belief and belief in oneself because like we noticed that, like when people say oh i can't do something or it's not possible for somebody to do something we also notice that it's also that affects that individual's belief system for themselves they naturally put a cap on their ability to do certain things just because they lack mm. like they they don't believe others can do it so immediately they don't think they can and what you were talking about with your dad i think is super powerful because it just shows how big of a difference uh, a parent's belief system in their child can have on the outcomes and the belief that child has in themselves. Mm. Like that's one thing I, I didn't have a dad either. My dad wasn't wow. there. Um, he's in Nigeria right now. We, we have contact via WhatsApp, but I had mm. a mother that massively believed in me and just massively didn't, didn't try to chime in. She wasn't telling me I was talented or anything like that. But every time I worked at something and got good at something, or had success with something, she would praise the fuck out of that. And she would just continue to put down, like you work at this, you get it, you're good. Like that's the, and that's why at this point my belief system's rock solid it doesn't matter what the fuck mm. anybody tells me because wow. of her and that's like that's that that's huge number one if you're an individual you can find that for yourself you can have that self-belief but getting around other people like me getting here to super training back in 2015 getting around a bunch of lifters that were stronger than me and better than me i i ended up coming here and i i was strong but i wasn't the strongest in the gym anymore mm. and i immediately started getting like much stronger because I had great people around me, great mentors around me that could take a look at what I was doing and lead me in the right direction. And I was also somebody that started reading a lot of books and shit because I didn't have necessarily somebody there. Like I had my mother, but I, I seeked out information. I seeked out books. I seeked out people because I'm just like, if I can't find this here, I will find it somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. So your mother kind of planted that self-belief in oh, yourself. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Hell yeah, it was crazy. She she was good at her job, man. She, she, awesome, she, man. Shout out to my mom too, man. I, I yeah. can't leave her out. She was she showed she did show me love though. Uh, like yeah, Ben, man. Ben's got a great mom too, man. So that's that's important. I'm sure you got a good mom too, though. Oh, absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. Hardest worker I know is my mom. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, am I change it? Am yeah. I lying? Hey, nah, it's mate, crazy. Hey, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, we see her doing all the knees over toes stuff too. She she's a trooper. But behind the scenes, she runs the customer service of my business. Sheesh. I've offered her a million times. Like, you know. She'll work 18 hours a day, man. She has to. She doesn't like taking days off. Mm -mm. She's like 60 something Ever. now. Right? Holidays. 67. So I, I let her do it. She wants, and I make sure I pay her well, but, you know, <laughs> she just wants to keep grinding. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. You got some teenage kids. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think has been uh, some keys for you guys to have a successful relationship? Um, I mean, there's a lot that goes into that, yeah, right? There's but a lot, but I feel like, man, that's another thing that keeps me wanting to be athletic and be in shape, you know? I just, like, that's our that's our time to, like, bond. We always play basketball, playing 21, shooting around, sprinting, man. Me and my son's always out on the track trying to, I'm trying to race him. He can beat me now, man, but he can't beat me in basketball yet. But, uh... But he just, just, just out there in the beach throwing the football, man, just... And like I told Ben... Um, I just want to be an example, you know. I want, I want, I want to be an example for my sons, and I want them to have somebody that they respect and looked up to. So, um, just being there, you know, and not judging them, and just being being grateful for them, and just kind of letting them letting them grow and evolve how they want to. You know, I never my my uh, my oldest son's a football player, and I'm I'm not the football player, you know. So I don't know how he picked it up, you know. I honestly wish he wouldn't, but it's that it is what it is. But um. But he just, I didn't, I didn't say you can, can. I never pushed him to football. He just ended up doing that. And my youngest is a hell of a basketball player. He'll be really good. Um, but they just got to work. And like I said, like you can't tell kids um, what they should do, man. I feel like I just got to be an example. Mm. You know, I feel like they're going to watch you more than you talk to them. You know what I'm saying? I never try to be like, oh, you got to do this. You got to be this. I'm just like, man, like, listen, 
you see your dad if he I mean if you want if you want to be successful you see if you don't then you know you can go down that path too but but yeah just keep it real man I just keep it real with my sons like all day what about you Mark you got an 18 I heard you got an 18 year old son yeah how do you keep that bond going yeah my son just turned 18 I think you know two of the biggest things for me is just to spend time with my kids so to just be there you know yeah. um another huge thing is just uh I believe in like um, incorporating stuff into your lifestyle rather than uh, having things be like a side thing or separate from anything. So if I have, you know, not so much anymore, but when my kids were younger, they would just go with me to places. You know, if I had a business meeting or something, we would make it like a family trip and mm -hmm. we would go and visit, uh, you know, whomever it was. And they might not have necessarily went to the actual meeting with me, although we've done that before too. <laughs> um, they've actually come with me. I obviously made sure it was appropriate because some meetings just not doesn't make sense to have like a four-year-old kid with you, you know. Yeah. But uh, wherever I could, I tried to make sure that it like matched up with whatever I was doing. Whenever I went and did like a seminar or something, somebody wants me to do a seminar in San Diego or something. My first thought is, I don't really want to go to San Diego, but my kids probably do. So let's tell the kids, hey, we're going to go to San Diego. We'll, we'll make this trip, you know, kind of work with um, my wife and the kids and everything. And we'll, we'll figure out a way to make it like a family vacation rather than just me going down there and teaching some people some stuff. And people getting a good experience from that, that's cool. But I'd rather have a good experience with my family and to have my kids, uh, you know, in, involved in it. And that way everybody knows everybody better. Like, Oh, I'm going to LA to meet Ben. You know, I'm going to uh, Florida to hang out with Ben and Mr. Infinity. It's like, doesn't sound like some shady, <laughs> doesn't sound like some shady ass shit that I'm up to. My <laughs> wife would assume that if I'm hanging out with Mr. Infinity and knees over toes that I'm just training all day. Like, you know what I mean? So, or saving the universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the last part, last piece of the puzzle, I think is just encouragement. Like everyone just needs encouragement. Like mm, kids, they just, big kids, especially they just need encouragement. Obviously you don't have to like, um, you don't have to tell them bullshit stuff, but you point out the things they are doing well. You point out the things um, that you find are good qualities in them. Like I, like with my son, uh, I have continually always, or the most, the best that I can, I've tried to encourage him to be like a free thinker, you know, for him to think about the stuff that you're taught in school. When they teach you something about science, or they teach you something about history, think about it. It's like one, it's like a perspective, mm. right? That's taught, it's been taught for years, but there's probably a whole nother story behind it, or there's stuff that you haven't heard. So be inquisitive, search for it, seek it out. You said seek, you said search. I wrote it down because I was like, that's dope because <laughs> that's what this is all about. You want answers? You want to try to change your life forever? Just keep asking questions mm -hmm. and you'll get there. Yeah. What about, um, like, how do you, how do the dads on the podcast fil <laughs> filter or block out some of the, well, I guess in SEMA for your pups, this yeah, will, this yeah, will work too. Yeah, talk about my dogs. SEMA's <laughs> yeah. a daddy sometimes. Yeah, I will, uh, this will be. <laughs> hey, this is training. No, I love this because this is training for me. Yes, it is. This is training for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I can become a dad, I got some great guys. I got the answers. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give an example of like a, like a literal f physical like thing that's happening. So my son turned one. Everyone's like, oh, he's got to have a smash cake. He's got to, <laughs> he's never had sweets his whole life. I can literally say that because he's only one years old. His mm -hmm. first birthday comes around and I'm like sick. There's no cake. And then all of a sudden somebody brings one out. And he's like, he doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, so they put his finger in the frosting and then put it in his <laughs> mouth and he fucking hated it. I was so happy. <laughs> uh, happened again. Uh, we're watching the Niner game. There's some, some brownies. It's like, oh, he's got to try it. He's got to try it. Like, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. But then, you know, I can only be on defense for so long. And plus, I don't want to be a dick. You know, everyone wants it. And I'm the only one that doesn't. Mm. Uh, he, tr he tries it. He hates it. He yes, cool. We survived again. I turn my back and there's someone else trying to put it in his mouth and he hated it again. So I was happy about that. Now, that's just like a physical thing. But I'm talking about like the, the mental side. And Seema uh, talks about a mind virus all the time. You know, people put that cap like he explained. Mm. Um Kids are going to be kids. They're going to be, oh, you can't do that because you're not this, you're not that. So how do you keep their their belief alive? And like, how do you block out all the noise? You got three dads up there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I had one word, but it's more, yeah, go I for only it. have a one-year-old. Um, but it's off Derek's, we talk about this concept a lot, is live it. Mm. So you can't control what your kid thinks. You can't control what other people are inputting. 
But if you live it, your kid is going to be more likely to take the data being come in and be able to think and choose the right path. I think that's the best we can do is live it. Yeah, you want your family to trust in you, you know? So when you when you make a statement or you make a decision and they see the way that you react to th- external things and they kind of they see it like at least, you know, work halfway decently, they have no choice but to be like that seems to be a good route. Mm-hmm. You know, I've explained this situation before we were we were in New York City and we were trying to go somewhere and we had like flight canceled and then we mm-hmm. tried to get a car and a, there was just like I don't know, it was just this huge thing. So I was just like, "Hey, let's just all like go on a walk." So we we walked for like two hours. We just walked all over the place, and we had a great time. And then when there was a car ready to, you know, for transportation, we were able to get a rental car. Um, but my son, you know, saw my wife's reaction, which she's more reactionary. She was pretty mad. Um, she got herself kind of flustered, and I was just I've been this way for a while because I've learned. Uh, how to have this skill set to deflect things that other people might find to be really stressful. Mm-hmm. And um, I was able just to grab my kid and say, hey, let's go for a walk. Mom's going to talk to these people, let her do her thing and uh, get that stuff off her chest. And then we came back around and we just, we had an awesome time. And it was like, no big deal. But if your kid repeatedly sees you making good decisions and repeatedly sees you um, acting specific ways in otherwise stressful situations, you know, they're going to, that's going to rub off on them big time. Last week I saw Derek's kid go into the gym by himself, start sledding on the weekend. He's a good looking kid, D1 scholarship. He could be out on a boat. We're in, by the beach. Yeah. So on the weekend, and then I saw him later that weekend doing yard work. So you got him, he's doing sledding and yard work on his own. That's yeah. a, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but he sees Derek's sled. Yeah. Derek does it every day, you know? Mm-hmm. He probably hasn't seen you too many times say, man, I'm too tired to hit the sled. <laughs> Has he, have you ever done that? No, nah, he always asks me, hey, you want to do this? You want to go sled? You want to, and I'm always like, I'm always up for it. But, and, and also, man, to answer your question too, like, you got to, man, you got to communicate, talk to your kids, have casual, real conversations, and you got to let them mess up. I mean, they're going to, they're not going to be perfect. They're going to eat ice cream. You know what yeah. I mean? They're going to, they're going to, you know, my son, like, um, I tell him, man, I tell him, I keep it real with him all the time, man, like 1,000. And and he always tries it, though. He always puts his feet in the fire and it comes back like, damn, you always did tell me. You did tell me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm never drinking again, dad. I'm never going to yeah. smoke again. Like, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? But they have to experience life. You know what I mean? They have to. They have to experience. You know what I mean? We had experience. When you can tell them, they listen to you. I'm telling you, when you're talking to your kids, they do listen but they might, they might try to, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, test the water, you know. So, but you got to have faith in, in, in your relationship. You know, I feel like, and my sons know, like, it's, it's their life. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. y'all life. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's y'all life, mm-hmm. you know. I can set an example. I can talk to you. But, I mean, you're going to you're gonna have to deal with the effects, mm-hmm. I mean, of your choices. But, um, but yeah, and I was going to ask you, Mark, man, what you said you learned this skill of, being able to deflect this energy. Like, what is that skill and how did you learn it, if you don't mind me asking? I just kept searching for it. You know, I just, I, I would I would communicate with so many people about nutrition and I would tell them this works really, really well and it works for a lot of people, not just myself, and people lose weight every single time and then they weren't able to, like, follow through on it. And I was always kind of confused. I'm like, well, what's stopping them from, like, what's stopping them from at least following this 70 to 80% of the time? Because if they at least did that, they would be able to lose some weight. And it kind of turned out it's just they weren't able to like mitigate stress in their life. The stress that was in their life, they viewed as being like a negative, they have a negative interpretation of stress. Mm. And we know that not all stress is a negative interpretation. Who better to talk about that than the knees over toes guy (laughs) who was in tons of pain for a long time. He actually did the exact opposite of what we were told to do with our knees. You know, it's like that sounds like it would hurt really bad. So... I just started kind of uh, searching and seeking out stuff on YouTube and just found more and more and more information about um, your mindset being a huge factor in all of these things. Um, The example I usually give is like death, you know, having somebody die in your family is like really, uh, 
it can be super sad. Mainly for me, it, it's more sad because how sad it is for everybody else around me. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm usually fine. I mean, I can get sad for sure, and I can get upset and get frustrated and all the same things as everybody else. Um, but it's really, really rare. Like I, I, I choose different modes of interpretation um, based on the inputs that are coming in. So I just recognize the input that comes in uh, doesn't have to uh, be a thing that triggers an exact response every time. I get to choose the response. And, and the response isn't like just some random thing that's on a wheel. It's not like, and see what it lands on. Oh, I'm pissed, you know, mm. and oh, I'm sad. You know, I, I can just, no matter what the input is, I can choose happiness every single time. And so as I, as I started discovering that more and more, it gave me like a euphoria each mm. day. And I, I almost, um, almost like a psychedelic experience in some weird way where I would feel just incredible because I was like, I feel really protected. I feel really secure. Mm -hmm. I feel insulated against anything that's happening on the outside. And so as much as I try to teach it to other people, Mm -hmm. um, I know there's some people (laughs) listening, but it's usually the stuff that is least viewed, least commented on stuff because I think there's people that aren't in a good spot in their life for it to land on them properly, for them to absorb the information. You know, like we talk about David Goggins. Sometimes if you listen to David Goggins out of nowhere, like, man, this dude is yelling at me. This Mm. is heavy. Like, I don't, I don't dig it. It just depends on where you're at in your life, whether you can even accept the information and do anything with it. A lot lot of that is like when, because a lot of that's Stoic philosophy, right? Like Mm -hmm. if someone wants to like learn about some of this stuff, a lot of that is based in Stoic philosophy, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if any of you guys are interested, like just Andrew is big mm-hmm. into that. You have a, what, mm-hmm. the daily meditations book from Marcus yeah, Aurelius? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, I always forget what it's called, but like my son's footprint is, you know, printed in there. Like that's, all, his name is Aurelius, you know. Is you ins- found it? Yeah, inspired oh, right. by Marcus Aurelius. But yeah, like oh. uh, that, that's st- when Mark showed me that stuff, I mean, it changed my life. It changed my mindset. We just put out a podcast recently. My mom was diagnosed with cancer and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say out of everyone in my family, I was the like the most like even keel person out of everybody. Everyone was like, oh, we have to really celebrate Christmas this year. And I was like, whoa, 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 like we're not talking that way. Like this isn't the last Christmas. Like we're going to celebrate multiple Christmases after this. And a lot of that comes from like, you know, the stoicism and, you know, like um, what, what you control, what you can't control. And then what you can't doesn't matter, but they kind of both don't matter anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, a lot of that stuff helps a ton. Yeah, there's things you can control, so that's great because that means there's things you can do about it, and there's things that you can't control, and that's great too because mm-hmm. you know there ain't shit you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so you know, you, you just kind of it just it just makes your life a lot easier. Uh, it's almost this. It's similar to the skill set of being able to lift and being able to train and being able to run and having like conditioning. Um, if we were to put people through, if Andrew picked, a, if all of us picked workouts for like one person to do in a given day, we would totally crush them, right? Because it would be so much different input coming in. They don't know what to do with any of those inputs. Um, but if, if we all just kept working out together, doing different exercises that each one of us likes to do, we would be totally fine because we exercise all the time. We have a skill set to handle that particular stress. We know how to interpret it and our body you know, fortunately knows what to do with that type of language. So mm-hmm. it works out for us. Yeah. It's called the daily stoic. I can't the believe I can't remember stoic. it. Yeah. yeah. I, have this, I have the book too. It's People don't one. understand when you're on a podcast, it's like sometimes your brain just all of a sudden forgets <laughs> the most important shit. Uh, so it's your yeah. book? No, no, no. It's uh, Ryan okay. Holiday. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. an amazing, just a daily thing. Like when my son was still, you know, baking, I'd read them like a page every day. It's super easy to read. So it's an, I highly recommend it. Yeah. And I, I think it's, a, it's super powerful. I started getting into that a few years ago too. And one of the big things that people kind of get wrong when they think of the word stoic, they think of mm. an individual that doesn't feel emotion. No, we're not talking about being an emotionless robot that goes through life like feeling nothing. No, you feel everything. You're just not a reactionary. You're not, re- you don't react to that with emotion. You take it in, you understand what's going on. You analyze, you act but you don't need to react based on emotion, which is how a lot of people get themselves into trouble, mm-hmm. especially guys. Yeah, they call it a knee-jerk reaction. Uh-huh. <laughs> do you ever, um, Mark, do you ever still experience any like um, any fears or any like um, doubts or misbeliefs within yourself? Or is that philosophy one that you're able to kind of like 
block those things out when you say you feel like you insulated? Um, I'd say that, you know, if you're not experiencing any type of fear, then um, that's probably not a great place to be. Uh, I think you you kind of want to like, quote unquote, make yourself a little bit scared here and there. Yeah. I think that's healthy. Um, you know, more recently I started taking up some yoga. I've been stretching more recently and I would like to, my shoulders probably starting to feel better. So I'm going to get back into jujitsu. It's not like jujitsu scares me, but it's new, right? It's, it's different for me. Yeah, and then right. also, I guess there is a little bit of fear because I'm like, I can start to think real negatively. Well, you're not that flexible. Like, why are you doing this sport? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to... But if I don't poke around with that, then I don't know. I have no idea what opportunity could be sitting right there for me. Maybe mm -hmm. it is something that, maybe I really love it. Maybe it's something that I do more often than lifting. Like, who the hell knows? Maybe it's, you know, or, may, or maybe it's not for me. But at least I find out. I figure it out. So I think, uh, you know, not being scared of stuff probably isn't great. Um, it's, it's uh, but I, it, rather than think of things being scared, I just think of like excitement. Like I'm excited for this. I've heard in SEMA talk about that before. Um, rather than think like, oh, oh man, I'm really scared to go against this opponent. I'm super excited to go against this mm -hmm. opponent. That's what that feeling is. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep that as positive energy. I'm not going to have that, like uh, take my uh, endurance and my strength and my skill set away from me. Cause it can do that. When I was uh, doing, when I was a professional wrestler, I had an opportunity to wrestle um, in front of probably like 20,000 people. Mm. And the first time that I did it, my legs were gone. They were, they were just, I was blown up. They call it being blown up. I was, I couldn't, I could barely move in the ring anymore. And I conditioned myself for it for a long time. I trained for it. Um, back then I was doing like interval sprints and I was exercising really hard but I got so I got so up in my head mm. that the blood flow, like everything, was in like my stomach. Wow! Mm. There was nothing in my legs. My legs felt completely numb, and I went to do like a particular move, and I could barely get my feet off the ground. And I was like, "Wow!" I'm like, "What the fuck was that?" And then I calmed down during the match. I calmed down, and one of the veteran guys was like, "Oh, I noticed about three minutes in." He's like, you, you calmed down and got your breath. I, like, I said, I don't think I was breathing. I think I was holding my breath the whole time. <laughs> so there you go. Anxiety, you know, there's, a, there's a scenario, right? Like where if I just did that the next day, the next night, I would have already been acclimated enough to have a much better performance. It just had to do with my interpretation of what was going on. Mm, that's real. Being scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what Ben says a lot too, man. You like, you like to put yourself in environments that's going to stretch you sometimes, right? Basically. Yeah, yeah my, I have... On this whole subject we've been covering, I have two things I do, and I think it's similar to what we're talking about. So I keep two different notes in my phone that I refer to often. One of the notes has my big goals. I find I need something to get me excited. Mm. I've seen an approach of have low expectations, don't set big goals. I get where they're coming from, mm -hmm. but the happiest people I see, I've never seen Mark having a bad day. I don't know what's going on in his life, <laughs> but I'm the same. You ever see me show up to the gym having a bad day? No. Ever. Mm -mm. Thousands of times I've never had a bad day. But having big goals gets me excited. But the other list is very different. The other list is the things that I look at that I remind myself, dang, I'm really appreciative for that. Mm. I'm really appreciative for that. Mm. And that's one thing about me. Um, uh, it could be a a steak or it could be the Simple. simplest things and I'm you would think I'm the poorest guy in the world I'm so appreciative for it but I see that as well with certain people um, I don't know gave Joe Rogan a book <laughs> you know so appreciative and you guys are the same way so I feel like you have two different lists your big goals and that really gets you excited that gives you something to be nervous about something to be excited in the morning when you get up if I'm not excited for my goals I don't know if I can be really happy if I don't have something that's a big enough goal that ex gets mm. me excited. Yeah. But I also can't lose sight of the things I'm appreciative for. So that's a list of people and things. Just this morning, Derek and I were using Mark shake straps going backward on the sled. Now, we go backward sled every day. Mm -hmm. Some days in our program, it's we go forward and backward. Some days we just go backward. Yeah. And so I already was experimenting with this 
for the days we just go backward. We do that on upper body day. So even on upper body day, we start by going backward with the sled. So adding this, I'm going, okay, now we're getting a big thing for us is grip strength for longevity. Now I'm getting my grip. I'm getting my upper back strength. I'm getting my legs. And I told Derek, man, if I, like, if I could only do that, I'd be a happy guy the rest of my life. I could work on different businesses, go drag a sled backward with these straps. My body would last a long time. I'd be a happy guy. Like, yeah, I'd be happy if that was all I could do was that I'd be a happy guy. So that's one of my things on my appreciation is the fact that I know that I can just go to the gym and I can sled and that gets my cardio and strength and blah, 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 blah. Um, and I have more on that list for me doing a deep squat is something I'm super appreciative for. So I have more on that list. Some of these are mentors that people would never guess. And because I have that list, I will occasionally reach out to these people out of nowhere and just say, man, I'm so grateful for X, Y, Z. And, but it's re this is really real for me. But if I don't have that list, we forget so much of the stuff that we really appreciate. But at the same time, my goals are like way too big to even talk about in public. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, you sound so, like a crazy person. Right, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my kid's education? Sure, I'll just make my own <laughs> education system. <laughs> put online, hopefully millions of people will do my education system. Totally crazy goal. Those kind of big goals get me fired up. They make yeah. me a better person. They make me work harder. They make me stabilize. But I don't, any success I've had, I've actually gotten more appreciative, not less. So I'm more appreciative. When I go get that steak and eggs after my workout, I go to the tin can. You know that place? Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> I'm in there with the old now people at the find. diner. <laughs> <laughs> That's my special time. I'm scripting. I'm I'm more appreciative for that steak and eggs than I was when I was 19 with messed up knees going to the same place eating steak and eggs. Mm. I'm more appreciative now for that same exact steak and eggs. It tastes better. It, um, and so every day is kind of like that for me. I'm, yeah. I'm, I think it's simple. So you know, everyone can have an appreciation for their own body. Like there might be a bunch of things that you don't like about your body or like, you know, maybe... Uh, Maybe you don't like the way that your body looks or whatever the case is. Maybe you're pissed because your knees hurt. Maybe you're pissed because your back hurts. But think about how many like trillions of cells that you have mm -hmm. and how many things are going right for your body or how many things have to go right for your body just for you to make it through a day. Yeah. You still got your taste buds. You still got your smell. You still got your eyesight. You got your breathing. Um, and, and all these things, like we just take them all for granted, but they're completely <laughs> automatic. Um, the greatest things that we learn are, are pretty much automatic. Like you don't have to, you don't have to teach yourself how to learn, how to talk. It's, it's just, you just are just observing and you just learn it. Um, you know, as long as you have like, a, I guess a healthy brain, um, the m movement patterns that we do and stuff, these are all things that you just observe and you start doing them yourself and you run your body through it. And the greatest things in life are also free. You know, a hug, uh, telling someone how much you appreciate them, telling yourself how much you appreciate a great relationship. Some of the shit that you've done with yourself, or yeah, a relationship with somebody. Um, so there's, there's. I know that sometimes people feel like everything's like really stacked against them, and I, I understand uh, where that can come from. But man, it's just sometimes cool that your heart's beating. Yeah. And when you take away, honestly, the focus from yourself, because like what you were mentioning there, there's something really cool that you mentioned within your gratitude thing that I hope a lot of people pay attention to. Uh, Andrew Huberman, we had him on the podcast a few mm. times, but he did an episode on gratitude. And he was talking about like, when I've thought of gratitude in the past, because I, I, every day I think about the things I'm grateful for and it does make me feel good. And it takes the focus off of myself because I realize all the things that I have and not all the things I don't have. But something I didn't really do often, and I do it randomly, but I, what Andrew talked about was one of the greatest things you can do for your gratitude is actually having a story and thinking of a person that maybe they've done something for you or whatever, you're grateful for them for some reason, and quite literally sending them a message or sending them something and telling them, hey, I'm so grateful that I have you on my life because you've done this, 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 and this. Number one, that does something for you as the individual doing that because now you realize something that you're grateful for, but it impacts that person even more than it impacts you. The person that's now receiving that gratitude, it's something that like, if, you, if you're the recipient of it, th that level of like receiving gratitude is actually extremely beneficial for that person too. And it's something that he talked about in that podcast. I'm like, wow. I haven't really heard anybody really talk about that, but the fact that, I don't know if you 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 looked into that, it sounds like this is something that you've been doing. I, I love Huberman. Yeah. I want to meet up. I'm going to be meeting up with him soon. Uh-huh. But I actually didn't know that. Yeah. 
But yeah, so my list, it's an active list, meaning, so when I go look at that list, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm grateful to go do the sled, and I go do the sled, or I find someone from that list and I write to them. So it's not yeah. just something I think about. I keep the lists up to date of the goals and the appreciation. Mm. And the appreciation list, I go actively send my wife a message or something. And like you said, it it really makes a difference. And we all mm-hmm. think those things and we feel those things, but to then act, take the action and do it has a big impact. Yeah. And then do you reflect on that list every single day? Like, I'm curious, like, because I'm personally trying to get into journaling and doing like a gratitude thing every day, but like, I just... It's just not in my um, my habit, like uh, like daily tasks and stuff. So it's just it's hard to fit another thing in. So I'm just curious, like how often do you reflect back on that list? Probably every few days. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm an efficiency guy, so I I love the idea of people writing what they're grat- what they're grateful. I just keep the list up. Yeah. I just keep the okay. list, and I can go to it, or I can, I can add someone to it, or I can add something to it, or I can. You know, keep it up to date and mm-hmm. maybe every few days, but Sick. maybe it would be twice a day and one day. Kind of depends what you're going through in life. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mark, put, he put me on to uh, Jim Rohn. Is that how you pronounce it? Rohn? Yep. Yeah. Um, he, he has a really famous um, speech where he, he opens it up by saying, how hard is it to get out of bed when you're not putting in 100%? He's like, you hear that alarm going off? It's like, well, I'm not putting in 100%, so I could easily hit the snooze button. Mm. It's like, but how easy is it to get out of bed when you are putting in 100%? It's like, you're getting up before that alarm even goes off. And for me personally, I feel like having that, because I'll remember shit throughout the day. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's right. Ben, you know, Ben's coming in. Like, like, but if I woke up knowing that right out the gate, yeah, dude, I would be fired up like instantly instead of like, I don't know, a couple hours later and be like, oh yeah, that's right. Today's going to be an awesome day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's something I, I want to practice. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. yeah, gratitude is huge, man. I got a, I got a little slogan, man. I got T-shirts made up. It's called "Wind and Now." You know what I mean? Because like, like you know, you hear me say, "Only now exists, man." You got to focus on the now, win the moment. I got a price is point zero 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 one, like compound interest. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, one thing, man. Bent every time, ta- every day is the first one in the gym. Always inspiring, always motivating other people. Like not like you said when you when you always thinking about yourself, self, self. Your universe shrinks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when you give in, when you gratitude, when you're showing appreciation, you know, the universe expands. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that's one thing about Ben. He's always like, today, he had those straps, man. He couldn't stop talking about those straps. How can how can we market these? How can we get there? Where's the link? I got to get these on my... I was like, I'm telling you, he was like, so... But he's like, that's his universe. Like, he wants to expand and help and, like, grow. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, that's my tidbit, though. <laughs> and well, because... <laughs> We wanted to break up down <laughs> longevity. Derek and I have seven steps, mm. which you can say almost in a phrase. And that's why I got fired up about these. The seven steps for training for longevity. And does he still pull up clips on here? Yeah, I can. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, just tell um, me what you need. We made this, Derek and I made this um, as my last Instagram post to keep okay. it really simple so you can just see the seven steps. And the idea is if you start training from your feet and ankles, really gets that circulation going the right way. And that's what a sled does. And if you apply pressure, rather than avoiding, if you apply pressure at a pain-free level, and this sled allows us to do that, and at least as much backward as forward. Is that it right there? Yeah, so this was me asking Derek. Oh yeah, sorry, how do I, how do I wanna be like you when I'm 43, (laughs) right? And so a lot of my ideas, Mark Bell knows, Louis Simmons, Charles Poliquin, mm-hmm. all these ideas, the brilliance is there, but seeing Derek in action and seeing the deviations he made specifically to how he wanted to train, mm. not just the idea being there, but for example, that we sled every day and we do it at least as much backward as forward. So that's our one, two, three out of the seven point list. Start from the toes and feet, apply pressure from the ground up at your pain-free level, at least as much backward as forward, And then we use these regressions to restore full range of motion, which you gotta have for your joint to get the nutrients in there. And we like to strengthen through a full range of motion where you get a stretch as well. So so there's the full bend on the joint, but there's also like a full stretch. Mark sent me one of his favorite hamstring exercises, that dumbbell, that thing is golden, that sort of dumbbell RDL where the intention is not necessarily the weight, but the length. Mm. That quality, when you can strengthen through length, through the stretch, it appears to be exponential for reducing injuries. Not mm-hmm. just like 
stretch plus strength, not just 2x reduction, like 4x reduction. Mm. And then if you leave no weak links, so that's something we get Derek's um, low ab strap, might as well call it the reverse squat strap. Yeah. I was way too fired up about that. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, the reverse squat. <laughs> you have, did you, you didn't bring that in? Okay. Oh, we're going to make videos. Don't okay, worry. Okay. We're okay. going to make great videos. Yeah. But I was so fired up about that because it allows you to train a weak link and that exercise in general. We like to leave no weak links. But the seventh one is finishing with the hand and, and fingers. And at our original gym before COVID, we had all kinds of grip stuff. And you can weave this into a workout. You can finish. I leave a crush gripper and a finger expander in my car. Mm -hmm. So when I finish sessions, I finish mm -hmm. with the hand and finger. Smart. And Derek's done a lot of research on that on longevity. So then using this where it has this thick, my, my grip right now is tired out mm -hmm. from using these on the sled. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when you, and because this is elastic, yeah. which I've never seen anything like that, uh, and these are affordable. You're never going to see me fired up about <laughs> some super expensive product. I like stuff mm -hmm. that anyone can get their hands on. And I'm trying to rip it apart. So you know how weak most people are between our shoulder blades. And yeah. I, I work, we, it's the nature of it. I spend so much time on the computer. So the fact that I can train from the ground up and be working that step seven of longevity, finish with the hands and fingers. So I'm strengthening my grip, mm -hmm. fi fixing weak links at the same time. So by doing a backwards sled with that, we're essentially getting... Uh, and if you consider, yeah, so we're getting five out of our seven steps for longevity with one exercise. Mm, yeah. So that's why I would right. rank using these, gripping them, putting enough weight on the sled that it's challenging not just your legs but your grip, trying to expand it as you're doing it. You're getting your backward sled. I would rate that the number one longevity exercise. So I got super mm. fired up. Yeah, <laughs> I already sent to my staff up. and to all 600 plus ATG coaches around the world. I already instantly sent video this morning of like, okay, on the Tuesday and Friday sessions where I suggest getting straps, thick grip, you know, that use whatever you can. These are affordable and the elastic component allows you to work between the shoulder blades mm. where we're like all weak. So right. it is what it is. It's the best product for the job, but use what you have, get something with the thickest grip you can. And now you're working all that stuff from the ground up, your backward sled, and getting your grip at the same time. Mm -hmm. okay. So that was kind of a, a segue from the subjects we were talking about and being appreciative. And so I'm like, yeah, we need to get a million of these out there. <laughs> so my, my mind thinks in terms of big goals, but I also was telling him, man, I'd be grateful if all I could do was drag a sled backward and working my grip and my upper back at the same time. It would solve, my body would last a long time. So it's those, yeah. it's those two lists for me. Big goals, appreciation. And yeah, that one video shows the seven we're talking about, and we'll break down some cool videos too. How long have you been playing basketball for, Mr. Infinity? How long have you been like an athlete, I guess? Uh, probably my whole life, honestly, man, as far as playing basketball since three, four, five years mm. old. Yeah, I played high school. I was like, uh, this is all, so impressive. I was all state. I was all state in college. I mean, high school, and mm -hmm. then um, played D1 in a school called IPUI. And then I uh, went to, uh, like I said, played in basketball in Norway. Mm. Um, so pretty, pretty playing from whole life and just and like I think I think what's big is just for longevity is just continuing never stopping one thing like when I go home when I see I think as long as you just continually staying consistent and, and never stopping I feel like that's that's key to longevity man like just just never stopping yeah I mean with the 10 minute walks and stuff like that just just trying to just trying to encourage Something. people just to keep moving yeah. in some way. And your uh, body adapts, man. Your body's so adaptable. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for pulling it up, bro. Yeah. No, I'm, I was just, I mean, I'm looking at, this is just one of many, but like. <laughs> he's not a bodybuilder. 43. <laughs> like. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's that? That chest. You're not, you're not a bodybuilder, but you got a bodybuilder chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I mean, when we hey, talk about you, goals, I'm just like, shit, I, I, I've said it since I've been working here that I know when I hit 40, I'll be in the best shape of my life. But Good. like every single day I'm in the best shape of my life. But like, shit, I mean, if I can look anywhere near that at 43 or 50, whatever, it doesn't matter. That Like that's inspirational, man. So I'm loving this right now. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.
Yeah. Pat Roger family, how's it going? We talk about sleep all the time on this podcast. That's why we partnered with Eight Sleep Mattresses. Now, this mattress is the Tesla of sleep. It's the Tesla of beds. Its technology tracks your heart rate, your heart rate variability. It changes its own temperature based off the way you sleep so that you get better sleep every single night. It is quite literally insane. Check them out. Andrew, how do they get it? Yes. And before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know that you can actually set the bed to wake you up silently. I know that sounds weird, but actually the bed starts vibrating around your head and it doesn't wake up the entire household the way my phone used to do back in the day. So now I just kind of have the bed wake me up silently and it's amazing. You guys got to head over to 8sleep.com slash power project. That's E-I-G-H-T sleep.com slash power project. When you guys go there, you'll see a banner across the top saying that you're going to receive $150 off automatically. So again, that's 8sleep.com slash power project to receive $150 off your pod pro cover or your pod pro cover and mattress combo. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to the podcast do uh, and uh ben how long you've been playing basketball for as well yeah i think i was four yeah. when i started playing <laughs> so like so i think sometimes people think <clears throat> we hear like you guys are saying not to stop and you're saying you did it for a long time what about something like an overuse injury is this kind of a do you, do you think this is like a fallacy like that you end up with an overuse injury or is this like an inefficiency and weakness more so than an overuse issue both it's a math equation so a jump is X amount of force, right? You can measure that stuff. Well, how many times are you jumping in a game? How many games are you playing? So now how much protection you have relative to that? So you could get more bulletproofed up. You could also play more sensibly. But when you're in the sport, you don't have a choice. You're subject of what the coach is saying. Mm -hmm. So there's things like that. I think for both of us, that's one of the deep drives behind the sled training because we know that it makes you healthier, but you can give athletes that, okay, you've been screwing up, hit the line, no, hit the sled because of the overuse aspect. So we can change team sports for the better with those overuse injuries by using the sled as punishment rather than more of the same running or whatever it is. Yeah. So um, it's a math equation. How much are you going to go after that activity? How much protection do you have for it? Yeah, overuse is a real thing, man. Yeah. Like um, before um, this training philosophy, man, my body was kind of broken down, man. I had a lot of knee tendonitis, my ankle, my feet, my hips. Um, when I played college basketball, I had to get cortisone shots in my hip just to kind of get through my my senior season, yeah. you know, and uh, my hips are so out of balance. Like literally before every basketball game, so I wouldn't feel pain, I would go to the hospital, get a cortisone shot, play the game, and just – and so, uh, so yeah, man, overuse and just like lack of knowledge. And I think that's that's what you guys are spreading, man. A lot of just awareness and knowledge, man, knowledge. People just lack knowledge. And so the more we can just like disseminate this information out there, the better, you know. So, so yeah, so but I feel like overuse is a real thing. But but those seven steps, man, that, that Ben just said, well, well, goes a long way. I mean, it may seem simple, but they go a long way of getting those full range of motion, um, continue to keep keep your body um, agile and adapted to those to those um, to those ranges is key, you know, because I never had those ranges. Yeah, I think you know some of the stuff that you guys are saying and some of the stuff that we see online. Like to me, a lot of it is very similar. Like um, some of the stuff that's shared by like Joel Seedman. Um, I know that people think that that guy is on the complete opposite end of what you guys talk about. Um, and I can understand why, because you see he does like a half squat or quarter yeah. squat or something mm -hmm. like that in comparison to what you guys do. But most of what I see that you guys are showing or what you're demonstrating usually is done with like hardly any resistance. Like there's not a lot of weight. Now these exercises are still really hard, like a Nordic or something like that. It still requires a lot of strength. And even some of the exercises where you're doing more full range of motion, and I've seen you wear uh, weight vests and I've seen you hold kettlebells and I've seen you do lots of stuff where there is weight and for the given exercise it is uh, challenging but it's not like it's not like you're asking anybody like to squat lifting. like three plates uh, with their uh, heels elevated on a slant board and, and squatting down so when I look at a lot of this stuff I'm like oh Ben is saying something very similar to some of these guys over here and some of the stuff I heard years ago for Kelly Sturette that falls in line with some of these other principles and I realize like there's you know, some gray area where people disagree and, and things like that. But I just want to make it clear to people that a lot of the exercise that you guys are showing where there's this kind of uh, full range of motion, um, 
you're not really asking people to do anything that they're not prepared to do. And I just want to finish by saying this as well. I think that sometimes people, when they see the program that you guys are putting forward, I think they want to try everything under the sun. They want to get to it right away. Mm. And you can do more harm than good if you're not careful because you probably have never done a lot of these things before. You probably never addressed some of this. So if you're somebody that's looking to get into doing some of these things, in my opinion, you don't need a lot of weight. It's great to have progression. It's great to work on being stronger at the movement. That will probably mean that you're more proficient at it. Um, But in addition to that, just pick like one or two things to do. Do them a couple times a week, but really pay attention to how your body is feeling in response to it. Yeah, that's why we use the sled every day. The sled allows you to get that heavy ego output, the hormones going at your level. We have six plates in there on the sled right now for the backward. That's where we're more likely to load up. And then it's obsessive attention on the quality of movement and building up on the perfect rep. So you're chasing the perfect rep before you're chasing the load. And then I'm being sensible about what I put out online. So I actually do some pretty impressive weights on a lot of this stuff, but I have to know that people online are gonna try the impressive weight before they achieve the perfect rep. And if you understand how muscles, tendons, and ligaments work, we're actually growing and building tendon and ligament, Mm. but that process takes longer. You get more, once you understand this inverse relationship, on just a conceptual level that you think with it and you realize that muscles get blood flow more easily and they can grow more. But tendons do get some blood flow and can grow, but ligaments get even less blood flow. And But the, all of this can grow and tendons and ligaments can hypertrophy, but it takes longer. So if you're seeing knees, or if you're seeing full range of motion exercises, you're looking at a longer progression. Mm-hmm. And in some cases, it can affect the muscles like we've seen now with the VMO, which helps have less knee pain, that gets emphasized most when you're at 140 degrees. It's almost like when you're at full bend, it's almost exclusively VMO to get out of it. Mm. So if you're now bouncing out of the bottom, at what point are you actually loading the muscle? So when we do these exercises, it's a different thought with the weights. The weight may not be as impressive as you could do if you were bouncing out of the bottom. So the level of coaching detail in our program is insane because of understanding the science of what we're trying to do. Then you see someone at the, at the pinnacle, you would look at Tom Platts, who we talk about, mm-hmm. and he has the most muscular legs of all time, or up there. I'm not going to debate. That's not the, the purpose of the, anytime you say the greatest, you <laughs> yeah, know. Okay, yeah. he's up there, some of the most muscular legs of all time. And he embraced those full ranges of motion. But in his teens, he was in an Olympic weightlifting gym. So it's not like he just jumped It's not like he spent a bunch of time in one range with super heavy loads and then tried to jump the same loads to a full range of motion. And you see Mark really touched on this. Joel Seidman, Kelly Strett, knees over toes guy, whatever it is, you're going to see common denominators and you're going to see that the greatest coaches don't leave any weak links. And that's one reason I have tremendous respect for Louis Simmons because he was a powerlifting coach, but if you really dig into the data, you see that he was innovating certain solutions for full knee bend. He innovated the reverse hyper, which trains really like a different area than a squat and a deadlift. And those are the things, those are things I look for. And I see that the best coaches are not leaving any weak links, mastering the full chain. So we tend to use the sled for the partial ranges of motion, which gets the blood flow and the loading and the strength to then be able to get into deeper ranges of motion. But we only do like across our weekly schedule, we do most exercises like once a week, maybe twice a week, but the sled we do every day. You see what I mean? So the sled you can recover faster, but these other things we're putting in the stimulus with the best form we can. We're trying to get measurably stronger over time, but we're not overtraining those things because they take time to recover. So hopefully that kind of explains that. The sled is something that I, I've, ever since that you guys have been talking about it so much, every single workout, even if like yesterday I had to do something quick and I, 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 my knee was feeling a little wonky, so I just needed to come to the gym. I only had 20 minutes because I had to go to jujitsu a little bit later. So I was like, okay, I did some backwards forward sled, I did some tib, 20 minutes and I was out. My wow. knee was feeling great. But mm-hmm. I do that. I, the sled is something also consistently every single time I hit the gym. I always hit the sled now and it has paid dividends for my performance. It's one of those things that like 
I wish more gyms had sleds. Like you guys, you guys have been talking about it so much. If more gyms had sleds, people would be able to reap some benefits from that. Yeah. But it 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 gives you the most bang for your buck. Yeah. But all of all three of you are getting to the most important part of this is that there is no button you get to just sign off and sell your body and live the rest of your life in the clouds. It's it's still going. You gotta keep putting one foot in front of the other. You're not just going to have this magical feeling 24 seven. And the way that you actually feel better is by moving, is the motion. So, you, mm. so find those things. We're never telling anyone what to think. We're just supplying solutions. Oh, it's going well for you? Awesome. If something else is going well for you, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, that's the finishing touch that when someone really gets that, like we've been standing here for a couple hours, I can't wait to go get some motion mm-hmm. because I understand that my body's not just going to float through the next <laughs> 50 years of my life. And I can actually move my body to a younger body. Mm. And that's what they found with the idea of, of pressure is that actually a body with more pressure upon it. And this really justifies why sometimes you'll see power lifters who actually have really good health benefits from certain aspects is that a body with more pressure mm. ages biologically younger. Mm. You want to get younger? The four of us don't need to go sit on a couch right now. That'll actually make us older. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. If we want to get younger, if we want to feel better, we actually have to go move to do that. But I... I definitely didn't think that way for most of my life. I thought the way you, you were younger was to like preserve the body by not using certain things. You know what I mean? By avoiding things. By so, I think that's kind of that's to me that's like the finishing touch of longevity that Derek was saying is that keep going. He was saying keep going. Yeah. What thing about me? I never yeah. stopped. Yeah. Yeah. There's a price to pay with comfort. You know, um, just having too much of it. You know, and we we're. we're we're sitting um, where we no longer are like lying on the floor, you know, like when you go to sleep, like you have a bed that's specific for that. And, you know, if, uh, if you just didn't have furniture, um, we would probably, and if we kind of lived the way that we used to, um, then we wouldn't have to like make up so many different exercises for us to do, <laughs> but our bodies don't move the same ways that they used to. Um, we used to do all these movements. I was talking to your wife about it. You might go in the woods and you might uh, kill an animal and you might pull it out by walking backwards with it. Um, and then squat by the fire and eat it. Absolutely, yeah, because there's no chairs. You know? You're either squatting and how long are you going to squat for? Maybe just a couple minutes and then you're going to sit down with your legs crossed and then you're going to be on your knees and then you're going to be standing up again. And so you, you, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that enough. And so now it's like you got to figure out, okay, I'm going to pull this sled backwards and I'm going to do all these uh, other exercises to try to make the knee more resilient and make the area stronger. And I like what you're saying about the ligaments and tendons because I think that that's kind of stuff that just doesn't get talked about enough. And Louis Simmons, again, uh, he was like, look, you got to do like 50 to 75 reps in a row to kind of get to those ligaments and tendons. I was always like, what the hell? That's a lot of reps wild though but that, it works. that kind of explains some of the sled though so we don't in our gym when people visit us we do eight round trips and that ends up being about 100 meters forward 100 meter backward but we actually increase intensity as the sets go so we're under we're trying to um train that blood flow and whatever at a deeper level so it's yeah chalk up another one for louis and the guy's just such a genius he, there's video of a 330 pound guy doing Nordic hamstring curls in his gym. He made Ooh. it. Yep, it's called a poor. And unfortunately, it'd be way too hard to find. But I can send you the video. Um, in my chat with all those ATG coaches, we mm-hmm. use that every now and then um, because Louis made a poor man's. It, it's just a Nordic bench, and he's got a guy. They were betting him like 20 bucks, and he did 10 mm. uh, Nordics at 330 pounds. Yeah. So Gosh. that. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's insane. Yeah. So. That would re- represent, I mean, <laughs> these conversations could go on forever, but that would represent something that there's some degree of measurement there. So I guess that's mm-hmm. what Derek and I are trying to do is actually take some of these qualities, but then bring them to certain measurements, meaning maybe you feel like crap after sitting at your nine to five. But if you can you know, bend over and palm the floor with your flexibility versus if you couldn't even touch your toes, and that's just one thing. It doesn't mean that that one thing fixes everything. It's just an example that you can put in the work and achieve certain measurables the same way you can put in the work and achieve certain bench presses and squats and deadlifts. And that powerlifting mentality is actually correct. You learn how to put in the work over time 
for measurable changes. And that's just what we're trying to do with things that relate to mobility and longevity and things like that is put in the work, find safe measurements over time. So we're obsessive on that measurement side too with that, you know, we're looking at that reverse squat and how many people can do half body weight for 20 reps. Yeah. Um, so th- yeah, these are, these are things you work towards over time. You keep working towards. Does it mean everything is great? Um, maybe not all the time, but it's better than it was. And we have to give ourselves credit that we don't, we haven't all been through a natural life. We weren't all, you know, I was icing my knees and having surgeries, not dragging, you know, animals backward and sitting around with my knees. I probably went 10 years without ever bending my knees all the way, not knowing Mm. what a disaster. And you know, in basketball players, Mm. probably most of us go years and years without ever bending our knees all the way because it's too painful. Yeah, because we true. build up so much so much trauma in the area. And now that makes these super degraded conditions. The amount of basketball players now in their 40s who are struggling so bad, meaning guys who used to play, it's brutal. Guys reaching out every day, man, I'm on my seventh surgery. I got to do something different. It, I've seen 13, 14 knee surgeries. And yeah. some of these guys were great NBA players reaching out. So, um, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. But that's why big goals and appreciation. We're fired up. We have solutions. That's you, why. Do you like? Are you saying that one of the reasons that does happen? Because there are many reasons why this can happen. But one of the reasons is the avoidance of that range over time. Big time. Yeah. Because you're you're just you're playing basketball for so many years. You mm-hmm. build up that trauma, so then you think it hurts to do full range of motion. There's no kinds of education, zero education on how we can get there, how we can regress it, how we can get into it and restore that. But that is what we would be doing naturally in life. We'd be giving those joints some some bending. True. So we have to acknowledge ourselves and give us, ourselves you know, credit, not be hard on ourselves. Okay, we're in pain, this, that, the other, back pain or knee pain, all this stuff you know, adding up. But we haven't all just lived ideal lives. So let's give ourselves some credit and, and work on it and improve it. If we can even improve it, to me, that's worth going for. One of the big issues, I think, is that <clears throat> strength coaches don't have the knowledge to do anything other than strength train with weights. That's like, uh, that would be your go-to. Like if I was a strength and conditioning coach, <laughs> I, I would go and I would take a certification class and course and they would talk about lifting weights. Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm sure there would be some stuff about like isometrics and body weight stuff, but that stuff's always like swept under the rug. That's PT, right? Like it's a that's warm-up maybe. Yeah, it's a warm-up. Mm-hmm. It's for after you're already injured and hurt. And so... I think a lot of times, you know, you're thinking, I got this basketball player and, you know, he can't squat below parallel because he's 6'8 and he just leans forward and he's got knee pain. He's complaining about that. A coach will be like, all right, we'll just reduce the weight. But that's not really a good solution. A better solution is how do we get you moving in the longest range of motion possible that's still safe? Maybe for that athlete, uh, maybe they have to hold on to something. Um, as they go down, so not all their weight is uh, in that deep squat position, right? Don't you huge, have people do that sometimes? Huge trick for that is holding dumbbells and reaching them out in front of you. It right, counterbalance. counterbalance. Yeah, that's something we've been using lately yeah. with our buddies it. who are six eight with no knee cartilage left, and they and they, but they finish sessions because of the sled and these tricks for regression. They finish sessions going, "Oh my god, I never thought, I never thought the rest of my life I would bend my knees like I just did." Mm-hmm. Without you, pain. And, but you and have now the, to get into those positions, right? Exactly. But it's not, it, those things aren't taught. Knowledge moves fast. Training, training, diet, these kind of things. This is, we're still in the, in the newbie stages. Yeah. So it's no one's fault, but the educational system built up on poof, textbooks. It takes 20, 30 years to change the textbook. That was one of the big things Charles Poliquin got into me is to be relentlessly pursuing knowledge, but to realize that a textbook, it's doing its best job, but for Mm. the entire system to change, it's going to take like 20, 30 years. And that's, that's if you're lucky that the data gets in. So sometimes a piece of data is entered, which actually is found to be false, but now you can't even change the previous data. Like with the VMO, they did a whole study and determined that you can't, you can't preferentially train the VMO, but they actually never tested below 90 degrees. So they did all kinds of foot positionings and all kinds of stuff. And ch- then um, much more recently now, they did one and they actually ch- tested like full bend and they found that you definitely preferentially train the VMO when you're coming out of a full bend. But that is not, if you go look at the textbooks, that's not there. And now how long will that 
take to change that and who's going to change that? Mm -hmm. So making your knowledge base, understanding that textbooks are there, but again, it goes back to the mentor thing of people are achieving the results you want. This is what we do. Guy, people like us are, we're on the cutting edge. We're putting out the data in real time. Just that trick with the dumbbells to reach out in front. That doesn't say that in any textbook. Elevate the heels, reach the dumbbells out in front. Don't even start that until you've been backward, which is a shorter range. And on the forward sled, you notice how you get into that medium range, you bend more. So for leg days, we don't just go backward, we go backward and forward. Now you're getting the short and the medium range, and now you're regressing the full range, boom magic happens that data i just said boom now people are changing their lives with that but that's going to take 20 30 years to be in a textbook mm. yeah it's important that people understand like some of the stuff that you ask people to do and some of the stuff i've seen you guys working with people sometimes they'll just do something as simple as put their foot up on a box and drive their knee forward because yeah. they don't have the ability to do the atg split squat or they don't have the ability to have their entire body weight uh, down in a super low squat position for some people that have had knee problems in the past, like that's way too much, or maybe they have a hip issue. You can simply take one foot, put it up on like a chair, bend yeah. your knee forward as far as you can handle, and then over time yeah, work on just, bending that more and more and more <laughs> and see if at some point you can uh, start to work towards having some improvements, right? Yeah, yeah, and the sled does build tendon. doesn't seem to get as much to ligament. You seem to need the full bend to get mm -hmm. to ligament, but that's... <laughs> You know, finding that sled helps get the circulation in there. Now you can handle a little bit more, a little bit more, put some tricks in, get, you know, more bend, do it on a sensible schedule. And well, now science is in your favor. Those things can change. One of the biggest knee issues that happens to a lot of athletes is, is meniscal tear. Mm -hmm. um, and many people I know did not choose to go the surgery route and they actually ended up being pretty okay. Um, but what have you seen, because I've actually gotten a few people because ask that specific question about meniscus, you mentioned you're gonna be here. So they're wondering <laughs> like, do you, do you think surgery is necessary or is a meniscus something that somebody can recover from over time by doing some of this work? I've had that question a lot. I wrote an article just about that question. Uh -huh. So verbally, I have to, you know, choose my words carefully, but I'm also not running from any subjects. And the first thing is understanding what the meniscus is. And it's like a rubbery shock absorber in your knee, shock absorption. And the degree of the tear only indicates how much blood flow it's gonna take for it to heal on its own. So if you have no methods of getting blood flow in your training and improving your shock absorption, hello, the sled, mm -hmm. things of that nature, um, then yeah, you may have to do something to get it to heal. So there has been studies on things like that, um, which look like it can heal both ways. You could have surgery and you can heal and some people heal naturally. So it's at least good to know that there are studies showing that from many meniscus tears, you can heal naturally. You might, if you know that your meniscus is torn, and you have that data, well, based on that, you might want to find out with your doctor how far the tear is so you know is that something that's going to be more likely to heal quickly or not. Mm. But if you're then just going to avoid your legs, not get circulation, not improve the shock absorption, then I feel like that could be tricky to get it to heal, you know, based on that data. Yeah. And maybe even nutritionally, you know, that could add up. What kind of circulation can you get from the nutrients? So... If you can get blood flow to it and, you know, the tear is not too deep, it's definitely a fact that tons of people have reached out and have done it naturally. Um, I'm lucky because my, my two knees are completely different. One was a total mess, all kind of tears, didn't do any surgeries because that was after I already went through surgeries to the top, middle, and lower side of the other knee. So... So I've been on both sides of meniscus tear. So one was done surgically, the other wasn't. They're both fine now. So yeah. I don't think someone at least has to be like too freaked out. You don't feel any difference in one knee versus the other, the knee that was cut into and the knee that wasn't? I would say the difference is that they both made me have to figure out certain things. The left one with like partially artificial kneecap, mm -hmm. I struggled with stiffness. So it made me really figure out stiffness. Super excited tomorrow having Kelly Sturet here. Mm. Something like flossing for someone who has stiffness could totally change your life. I'll have Derek comment on flossing to then get into, what do you think about that?
for some people we've seen, I mean, we've worked so many miracles with people in person by using the flossing to then get into it. Yeah, it's incredible, man. To answer your question too, I've seen a lot. We we dealt with a lot of athletes, man. A lot of like high level athletes, and and they come in with like some 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 severe injuries. And like like Ben said, man, um, like circulation, blood flow, and oxygen, and and finding ways to to push blood flow and oxygen to that area. And, and flossing has been like a miracle worker for a lot of my athletes, you know. Um, so. And I know you and I didn't even know that guy um, this is the one that, that originated that. Yeah, Kelly but that's that's that's, in, that's incredible. But because I, I learned it from Ben and, and I had, like I said, when I first met Ben, my knees were just psh, damaged. So um, flossing has helped. But just by just creating that blood flow and oxygen and circulation in that area. And uh, what else I was going to say? And like in the ATG program, man, I, and we, we get a lot, a lot of testimonies from people that had these. Um, tears and had and been able to regress to progress and and as a as as ATG has all these athletes just kind of like start at their level and slowly um, progress. Man, we we've seen a lot of a lot of miracles happen mm-hmm. into our athletes. But yeah, just for people that don't know what flossing is, it's basically just you're taking a band and you're just wrapping the area up and you're yeah. kind of doing like occlusion training almost and. Let's say that you did something to your calf or something like that, or your knee. You would wrap the area usually with the knee. You don't always wrap the entire knee because you got to be really careful if you're messing with the some of the just structure of the front of the knee. Like you got to be cautious of that. But Kelly will put, wrap up or he'll wrap down. Yeah, we put it, if this was a knee, we we kind of wrap down the patellar tendon, wrap down the quad tendon, so like two separate bands. Right, and then it's done as like a treatment. However. I'm really excited to have Kelly do a definitive video tomorrow. I hope he'll do it, and then we can make you YouTube's number one video on that from the source, showing you how to do it. And something mm-hmm. simple, if you just walk with the sled while that yeah. thing's wrapped, you're, yeah. you're just going to get a crazy amount of blood in there. Yeah, and I haven't done um, the sled version. I've only used it where you where you wrap both sides, and then you essentially do squats with yeah. it to mm-hmm. restore the mm-hmm. range. But I but I think I think there could be much further applications. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so I was mentioning, so for my left knee, this was an example of something that I experimented with to help it get over the hump. So ultimately, it was the full range of motion stuff that got my left knee back mm-hmm. because it was so stiff. But for the right knee, then it was the sled concept of actually putting in that stability. So with the sled and the full range, you have stability and you have full range. So it was never, for my knees, it was never one thing that fixed them because if one thing it it had to be the combination because my two knees were different so one knee would be doing good like so in my you know trials over the years oh there we go that's good um is him that's him so you could imagine in my trials, sometimes one knee would be doing better and then the other knee would be doing and so i found it, it it took that balance of having the sled and the full range of motion um the way that they're wrapping uh for people that can't see um Hopefully you can follow along on YouTube when we get a video up. Yep. But uh, the flossing is done a very similar to the way an Olympic lifter wraps their knees, where there's a space uh, around the patella tendon. The, exactly. the uh, yeah, they're wrapping uh, from the bottom, and they wrap upward, but they just kind of leave the uh, patella tendon kind of just uh, out there because if you go again, if you go across it, it's not going to feel very good. That's just going to hurt. Yeah, so you want to be kind of cautious of that. Yeah, so it's it's actually still kind of common sense and intuitive in that massage has been around and been used for thousands of years, but it's hard to massage like a joint. Mm-hmm. So essentially with the floss band, it creates a compression so that then when you bend it, it, it kind of soothes it out and op- it, it opens up a jammed area. Right. And that's the trick. A joint can become a really jammed area, especially from modern life. So if someone's now had a surgery on top of that, that's just an example of, um, something that could help open open it up for someone to then get into more range. So I don't floss anymore. I haven't for years other than when it's to do a demo video. <laughs> um, but that's an example of something super affordable to get. If you haven't used them, they're not like other bands. You do have to get floss bands. Mm-hmm. People have maybe mentioned something about like tire inner tubes or something, but <laughs> considering how cheap they are, <laughs> I would just get some floss bands. Um, and yeah, it'll be super exciting to have Kelly break it down. You guys, oh, 
Go ahead. You guys were talking about um, the grip uh, and then the the mm -hmm. hand spreaders. How like how long have you been doing that? Because I mean, I've seen people mess with that, but not something within a program. Um, so you, we do sled every workout. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we used to do sled on. Fridays, like mm -hmm. strongman finish out the week with strongman. But I saw Derek doing sled like every day. And I would often, we would often use a backward sled protocol for 30 days for people as like knee rehab. But we gradually realized like it just makes everyone's progress better. Yeah. That's quite frankly, the sled is what allowed my mom and dad to love working out. Um, but we also started, you wouldn't leave the gym. We would have like a grip of the day. And so this would range all kinds of different grip tools. So you wouldn't, you start the session from the ground up with the sled, mm -hmm. but you don't leave the gym until you finish, you know, with the hands and fingers. So a crush gripper and a finger expander are simply the two simplest ones someone could get. So, okay, uh, right now I have in the program on leg day, we, you know, I leave it in my car, but I don't finish until I take a set to failure on each hand. And the next day on upper body day, well, I just reverse the flaw like that. So that'd be something super simple, but Derek could break down like why that relates. Yeah. Yeah, so grip, man, grip has been like correlated to vitality and longevity, actually, like um, as people get aged, like their grip gets weak, you know, and so by by strengthening your grip, um, you're able to like let off almost like a chemical to, and tell your entire body to become stronger and more resilient. And so I feel like that's a real a big reason why um, we put that into the program for, for just maybe just longevity purposes and just uh, have an overall body. There's so many benefits. I actually wrote an article about uh, the benefits oh. of um, just having grip, grip strength and training, training grip. So um, just like for like any sport, like grip strength will give you an extra edge for yeah. basketball, for football, for any sport you do, um, grip is important. So, uh, so yeah. Like that picture of you doing the single arm hang, and I think you also oh, had ridiculous. a weight in your mm -hmm. hand when you were yeah. doing that. Like, it, and that's grip. Like and I do a hang. I do actually. I've been doing hangs every day for seven minutes. Seven minutes a day. Every Jeez. day for, for, for the, seven for, minutes. For the past. Minutes. For the past maybe, maybe six <laughs> months now. It's like it's on my like Ben has lists. I got lists. I got lists that I got to do every day. Like I was in there doing my push ups. It's just something simple. Like every day I do hundred push ups. Like hundred ab wheels. Like just some simple <laughs> stuff. Just to kind of I, I just make sure that I know that I, that I. If I, because sometimes you get so busy in your life, you you I might miss a workout. But if I know I got this, and then I got my ATG workout, then I know I'm gonna get it done. Mm. So it's just it's more like it's just a habit. Yeah, Paul, <laughs> Paul Charles Paulkman believes that the stronger the grip, the stronger you get everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And so for mm. me as a basketball player, I'm looking, going, okay, I want to have like a body built to fly. You know. So how, how do I? How do I have my upper body in a way that I actually have like an advantage on the court, um, but not being like heavy from the top down? Mm -hmm. You know, I have the whole rest of my life to build upper body. It's not like I'm choosing saying that this is the exact ideal amount of muscle mass to have. I'm actually, this year, I'm actually starting to gain some muscle mass. I want to build a better all around physique. But the grip has always given me something that if I can know that at least pound for pound, I'm going to have a stronger grip than anyone on the court. Yeah. I, th I think it's a big um, big difference. Yeah, going on Amazon and getting that right now. <laughs> I have a question. You, you said seven minutes, so you're not you're not holding for seven minutes, right? You're doing like maybe two minutes. So yeah, I got each. like I do like uh, my longest is like three thirty, three minutes and thirty okay. seconds, and then, Ooh, I, and then yeah, that's that's, that's a long time. That's still, yeah. that's long. with Impressive. one hand or two. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> two, two definitely. Okay. Okay. Like sometimes, sometimes on uh, Instagram, man, you get stronger when the camera's on, right? <laughs> yeah. So you just. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You get twenty percent stronger when the camera's on. I don't know, man. I bet you could hold yourself up there for five or six minutes if you really wanted to. Look at that. I I think the money's could. on the table. But yeah. also the fact yeah. that you do it every day. It's crazy. Cause yeah. you remember that day that like we were just like holding that. the grip yeah. in the gym? You felt that the next oh, yeah. day, right? Mm -hmm. He's doing seven minute holds Check Check every day. Jesus. <laughs> it's the way our body is designed. Our That's body ridiculous. is designed yeah, to thanks, bro. adapt. <laughs> yeah, to grip and to hold stuff and to yeah. adapt. That's I true. mean um, wow. strongman athletes, they talk about training their grip every day because there's so many strongman athletes that For have age. a previous history of, uh, doing construction. We had a guy a few weeks ago who, um, is a bricklayer. He shook my hand. He totally mm. crushed it. And I was like, what do you do for a living? He's like, I'm a bricklayer. I've been doing it for 30 years. I was like, well, that makes sense. Yeah. So having a strong grip is, is really important. I think it just also signals to your body that you're still, uh, 
you still have a lot, got a lot of life left in you because it must mean that you must be using your hands. Because if you're not using them, they're not going to be That's strong actually, for no reason, right? Yes, man. There's something to that. And you do have to open up your fingers. You know, the, the spreaders that you guys are talking about, that's important because every single thing that you do in the gym, everything from a from a squat to a uh, uh, to a bench press, doesn't matter what it is. You're usually squeezing the bar, and and you're because of that, you're uh, you're flexing kind of the inside of your forearm, and you want to get those extensor muscles uh, true. to to work, and that can help alleviate some elbow pain. And yeah. because now you're balancing mm-hmm. out that other side. It's like how often do you open up your Hands. I mean, these are things that are advised for people that are older that have like arthritis and stuff, but yeah. why not do it before you ever have arthritis? So maybe you don't ever have to mess with it. Yeah. That, that's kind of what we think is that, and it may not be a popular way of thinking, but you almost find the gems for longevity and you just found the trick to how a normal person could win a gold medal or something like that in a sport. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what we do. I, you know, the sled was a breakthrough for Derek and a breakthrough for my parents i do it every day in the program and Mm. and doing it backward was a breakthrough for my knees so we're looking at rehab elderly blah blah rehab that wound up being every day i'm asked how did you make your jump transformation how did you make your jump transformation how did you make your jump transformation if you don't lift heavy i'll bet my legs think i've lifted really heavy from all that sled work and it doesn't mean that i can't lift heavy but there's no doubt that the sled is gentler. You can teach. I was teaching it to my neighbor in LA at my at my apartment. Mm-hmm. I'm up there. And my I noticed he would go start using it himself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know if an 82 year old with no exercise experience is going to be able to go get under a squat rack and know what to do. Yeah. So we look for these kind of things. The you know the grip, the sled, these sort of things. The outliers for longevity might be how a normal person could find out their true athletic potential. Yeah, there's a lot of weird things to train. There's your neck, there's your hands, mm-hmm. there's your feet. And these are things that like, usually like if you're to measure someone's neck strength, like Charles Poliquin talked about this, if you're to measure someone's neck strength, they're almost always uh, the strongest person in the room. Wow. When they measure mm-hmm. their, wow. I forget how they measure it. I forget exactly mm-hmm. how, what they do. We've been working on it. But it's. I bet it's, that's true, man. Yeah, it's fa- it's fascinating. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, you think you'd, someone with a stronger neck might also have a bigger neck, and they're you, probably going to be pretty strong. Yeah, what do you think is the best way to train that? I went into high school, 92 pounds. So any muscle I built, it wasn't going to grow in places I didn't train. You know what I mean? So plenty of weak links. One of my last weak links left, relative for myself, is that I've been typing, mm-hmm. you know, bajillion words for a few years. So... We've started working the neck now. We have one of those iron necks. Iron neck. So it's not like in the program because we're still figuring out what do we tell people exactly. But so maybe you two could actually help us out with, for someone like me, a pencil neck who works at the computer. What do I put in the ATG program? I kind of think one of the best things you can do is like a farmer's carry. I was thinking heavy carry. Oh, wow. Some sort of heavy carry, whether it's, and the weight on your back too, I think is significant too, like a yoke carry. Those are a little more those are a little trickier because they're just like a little bit more dangerous. But that's, farmers carry a is super tough question. Legit. What does what does my mom do? Would she just hold? Would she just do? She do the like same a thing. loaded. So like a loaded carry just oh, at her level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you guys are big into the sled stuff. Now you got to start getting into the like weighted carry stuff. Like it, whatever way you can carry something, I'll show you today. That's whatever a good way idea. you can carry Everybody. carry a, a med ball, carry a, a heavy backpack, carry a, your baby back and forth, yeah. and whatever the hell it is, you know, carry carry stuff, yeah. pick stuff up. When I was younger, that was the I, like what I would just do at my gym was I would just grab the heaviest dumbbells I could find and walk paces back and forth in the gym. I mean, I was mainly doing that for my traps. But yeah. I noticed mm-hmm. like my traps and my neck just started to mm-hmm. pull mm-hmm. just because I was just walking around like that, and then I'd do just intermittent shrugs and walk back with the heaviest thing that I could. It's great carry. advice, grip and neck in in one movement it's great advice yeah, also uh people need to look up more you know everyone's on their phone mm-hmm. like when you walk you know not only just like look straight forward now, your head neutral but like direct look, train look is that up, something we can directly train you mean like the neck i'm just like, saying i don't know if it's realistic for me and a lot of other people to to do that as much so is there a way like Come on, we, bro. It's not it's not reasonable well, for people to look at the fucking stars. Not so much. <laughs> Come on, folks. Let's go. Get probably, away from your phone for a second. I probably didn't word that right. But something like the iron neck. I've yeah, been yeah. we've been 
you know, using that and working it. Do so you think an, that's the like, Iron Neck? I think is a great tool. Okay, good. that's a fantastic one. Uh, a less expensive one would be to use an exercise ball and to put your the back of your head on an exercise ball. First of all, well, if you're sitting down on an exercise ball, you roll yourself out to just when the back of your head is on the exercise ball and just do like a bridge. Um, mm. Just keep your neck real neutral. Just don't allow your neck to to uh, bend forward, but you're um, you're actually pushing you're pushing your chin into like your throat, and that it was a really really good uh, a, a really amazing neck exercise and also a posture exercise. When you get up from that, if you did it for like thirty seconds or a minute, depending on how long you can do it for, um, you'll just feel your posture is like reset, and it's uh it's something that's been used for some years now for. Um, for people to potentiate their strength before they go and do certain exercises. Wow. So it's something that could potentially allow you to be a little bit stronger because it's supposed to help tap into the central. I don't know how true it is, but it's supposed to kind of tap into your central nervous system. But just give it a shot. It's the easiest exercise to do, I think. And there's also there a this band. Great advice. Thank you. There's also like if you have an exercise band, a heavy enough one, you could literally wrap around a pole, put your head through. Yeah, and bring like literally that motion that you're doing is like I think it's super important is to kind of bring the chin, Mm. uh, like you're trying to do the sexy double chin look. You know, you're trying to bring (laughs) your chin to your throat. (laughs) I think it's a really important movement because our head is like it's forward and it's down, and we're looking at our food or it's one of those modern phone problems. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's all. That's all we're really trying to solve with ATG. We're not trying to be a sport. We're trying to solve modern problems. And this is one of the last ones and, and figuring out how to scale it to something that my mom will do, my dad will do that, you know. So these are, this is a lot of good options for us to work on. Thank but you. But if somebody has an iron neck, that thing is so useful. Oh, yeah. It's just, just I really like just it. putting it on, but how it's often, so fucking useful. How often do you guys isolate like grip and like neck in your training? Or you just kind of work it in? Or is, is there a specific protocol you guys use or? I think there's so much like grabbing of like weights that we don't, I personally don't actively like really think about grip a lot. Uh, However, I will deadlift and I will uh, do um, farmer's carry. So I would say that that would be my direct grip training. But direct grip training is amazing. And to to train it to some extent, the way that you're doing like almost every day, uh, it's a great idea. And I think that you can mix things up quite a bit with its style because we have... We'll show you guys some. We got some cool shit in the gym, like the Rolling Thunder. Ooh. The thing is we amazing for some for some grip work. It's fun. Yeah, we would throw it on the cable machine so that it was like easier mm. to set the weights for people. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. I think it sounds to me like the carries are king. Um, obviously, someone having a gripper and expander in their car is a, le- a little easier, but you don't get the full benefits of something like a carry for the neck and anyone can do a weighted carry Doesn't exactly how old or how young mm-hmm. no that i think i think that's what i'm realizing on this like is it. actually that a carry doesn't <laughs> it does you know um just like strength training just like a sled doesn't mean you're in a strongman competition mm-hmm. <laughs> my mom mm-hmm. does the sled without weight on it but she could also do a carry at her own level so i think that i think that's really good stuff somebody could carry a 10 pound dumbbell on one hand you know just in one hand and and walk and then they can do x amount of feet and then they can switch mm. to the other hand that that might be a way actually to sort of regress it a bit is yeah. if you do it one-handed it's almost harder but <laughs> you wouldn't have to load as much weight and you know what i mean so to kind of um people can do distance rather yeah. than weight too i, I think like that's that. what i would do is is the one arm version because i can i can safely get a more fragile person mm-hmm. into that oh yeah but still get a lot out of it Mm-hmm. Bingo. Also, Thank you. like, it, just because, like, in semen, I don't like, spend a lot of time doing certain movements doesn't mean there's not a gr- lot of utility in just doing something like old fashioned shrugs. Shrugs yeah. are great. Yeah. Uh, you want to just totally annihilate yourself one day when you're done <laughs> with you're done with a workout. Go and grab whatever dumb whatever dumbbells you want. They don't have to be super heavy. Do as many, like, literally as many reps as you can of shrugs. Fuck. You could take 30 pounds, and I swear to you, it will feel like 200-pound dumbbells. Your grip, everything just gets toasted. So just man, that's really try it at the end of a well. workout. It's mm-hmm. like it's wild, yeah. and then you get this crazy pump. It feels really good. Oh, yeah. Doing like all magic. that cable machine is really fun, too, because you can even do less weight, but it always has tension going. And then you can you change, change the angle. Move. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Your, your upper yeah, lip. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> You're like, hey, yo, Adrian. Yo. <laughs> like Rocky. You always make a snarl face, too. Yeah. Yeah, if... If you're getting carrying slash shrugging motion plus this, 
then over the next 10 years, I'll come in here at 40 and have better <laughs> posture than now. But it's about <laughs> no-neck Patrick <laughs> over here. <laughs> yeah. Not like that. I'm just talking about just better, more natural posture, yeah. the way I should yeah. have before, you know, typing so much. So, um, yeah, we're going to... We're going to work on those, integrate them into the program. That's what we're mm-hmm. looking for, those those simple things that add up over time. And I can't remember what guest it was, but they were just kind of basically laying down on a bench, and then they grabbed a, a light weight, and they were just like were holding it, and then they were just kind of tilting this way. Wow. I, was it Julian? I don't recall who it was, but it was somebody we filmed extra content Julian with. Julian Baldy, yeah. Was the, oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, Julian he came here? Yeah, he came over here. Yeah, right. He yeah. came down here. We, we, yeah, we, he, we did a video with Next. Next Joey is drawn as hell. <laughs> Joey is a freak. He yeah. is a freak. He's you one know, of our guy. Yeah, he's one of, he was one of our original ATG clients. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, super savage mentality. But yeah, there's a yeah, ton of Next dude. stuff. And and finding those ones that um, that are really easy to get oh, going. And that's why I like one. the shrug thing. You, you can do this in your car. Yeah. You can just... Uh, take the back of your head and just push it mm-hmm. into uh, your seat while you're driving. Mm-hmm. Just do it for, I don't know, do it for like 30 seconds. Like, yeah, get a little pressure there Isometric. and then in- increase the tension and try to go like pretty hard with it, whatever that means for you. <laughs> and then try to hold on to that for like 30 <laughs> seconds. Do it, at every, do it at every red light. <laughs> Dude, you'll be shocked. Like that shit, you'll feel that shit. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, uh, I, we Brilliant. haven't talked too much about it, but like you were talking about the, you know, the grip and the fingers and how it can maybe affect the elbows because I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Um, how about, I mean, is there anything uh, new as far as lower back that you've been messing with? Because obviously stronger feet and that can actually have a good effect on your lower back. But what about people that are just, they need to strengthen that specific area? I mean, Louis Simmons, you're looking at the reverse hyper, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm a fan of figuring out how to master any back extension machine just because, okay, my mom and dad have a back ex- a 45 degree back extension at home they got for like 150 bucks. I can't necessarily tell them to put a couple thousand dollar reverse hyper. Now, maybe that would be good advice to, t- to actually make them get a reverse hyper in their living room. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just comparing here. I think it's more about mastering how to do back extensions regardless of what kind of back extension your gym has and understanding to build up the muscles along your spine, realizing that you not only have a lower back, but you have a mid back. So that seems to be a huge thing that you could just be, you know, beating your head against the wall with the lower back. Mm -hmm. But then if the mid back, if the thoracic, so we, we directly train the thoracic, for example, Derek can do, we, we could go out there and he could do a, an exercise for the thoracic that 99% of people are physically not weak enough right there in the mid back. They will fail. What's we'll the, go do it. It's a, it's your arms are like this. So say you go on a forty-five degree back extension. Mm-hmm. So you go on a forty-five degree back extension. Can you actually raise and hold your arms there in line with your in line with your body with ten percent of your body weight each hand, ten percent of your weight each hand. Ooh, okay. And can you do that ten times? And wow. he'll go out there and show you can do it. Ninety-nine percent of people can't do that. They will have to. They'll try to cheat to bring the elbow in, which is less mm. less leverage. So you're coming. It's like It's a this? weakness. No, That's you're you're just you're just going here and going back down. Weakness so, in the mid so back. So forty five. Your arms are at forty five degree angle, not ninety. Forty five okay, degree okay. angle. So that's it. Really winds up being the strength. Like by the end, you f- you're lit up along mm, your spine, just on fire. Yeah. And then if you're looking, okay, you have the lower back and you have the mid back, but also the amount of sitting we do in those hip flexors. Mm-hmm. So to me, if someone said, "Boom, guns to head," you can only do one exercise for your lower back. I would say ATG split squat, the one where you actually lengthen and stretch out your hip flexors. Yeah. That sets you up for success in your back. I don't know no matter how much I train my spine, if my hip flexors are shortened. Mm. When you talk about shortened or lengthened, you're not talking about just a static stretch or something like that. You're actually talking about the way you change that the best is actually by loading the tissues through a stretch position over time. You can actually lengthen out the area. So if my hip flexors are shortened, I don't know how my back would do. If I can just have (laughs) lengthened out hip flexors, then probably every motion I'm doing, I'm able to, I'm able to actually use, you know, the muscles better. Now you add on to that something to actually give some strength to the lower back. And then you add on the mid back, you put those, you put split squat back extension, you know, full range of motion, split squat back extension and and trap three rays because it's like third row of traps. You put those three together, you got a killer back recipe that most people will fail, meaning Mm -hmm. 
they will measurably have shortened hip flexors mm-hmm. and measurably have weak and stiff thoracic spine, leaving. So now, okay, hip flexors, thoracic spine. <laughs> oh, now I wonder why my back uh, is mm-hmm. jacked. And you also find there's more incidence of shoulder surgeries and back surgeries in people where that th- that thoracic is jacked. When your up. hips are short, you can be almost 100% positive that your hamstrings are going to be crazy tight. Because now you're kind of swooped like yeah. this, and once you go to like bend, yeah, it's just going to load everything right in your hamstrings, and you're going to feel like they're going to just explode on you. Yep. Uh, what cues do you guys use for um, like the mind muscle connection with the back extension? Um, because if I get on there, um, I have a really hard time even feeling anything in my back. Um, you know, I've have some back issues, but like when I get on there, I feel my glutes and my hamstrings, and that's like almost exclusively it. Maybe uh, upper back if I'm like. You know, trying to like, um, I just uh, bring in my scaps, you know, like that, I can feel that. But my lower back, I, I don't feel like it's even doing anything. I mean, for you, probably be good to test this, this mid back because then you could be on the back extension mm-hmm. and be working the mid back at the same time. Probably good to check those hip flexors. So if someone's, if someone's beating at the back and that doesn't seem to be solving it, probably a good idea to check the other ones. Also, just, improving range and reps meaning um it's going to take some time but most people can't put just a 45 degree bar on their back and do 20 back extensions mm. but guys like dmitry klokov and olympic lifter they're, they're they like if you try three sets of 20 or something on the the back extension and then over time you start adding load to that you start to feel the muscles more mm from building it up. That's why Julian was such a freak because he did a 275 pound <laughs> back on. extension. Some 275. He went, he went viral on that and you know, more power <laughs> to him. He's he's wild. he's one of the mentally savages. But I also yeah. taught, Julian's the kind of guy that I've given so many rides home and he's from our, he's from Italy and ended up playing high school football in our town. Mm-hmm. And when he really started lifting weights was at our gym. So yeah. we've made some crazy mentally tough dudes yeah, over yeah, the years. That sled, remember when he had a butcher outside? Me and Julie was on the same team yep. against somebody else, man. We, we, me and Julie probably, we probably should be dead right now. Like we went so hard outside, <laughs> like a hundred degrees. Like, but Julie was man, like, pull this stuff ah, up real quick. Ah, ah, Do you remember ah, his yeah. IG? Uh, I just mean, type it, in Julian Baldy, it'll, yeah. it'll pop up. Yeah, um, but he is literally one of those guys that like the, his his mentality. Like that's why oh, people think people see his transformation. Like this guy's all the drugs. Like nah, y'all just don't realize this man's work ethic. Yeah, he works, and uh, it's he's his mind, insane in focused. the best his, way possible. His, focus. his work ethic is. On there you go. Real, that's yeah. That's our ATG much, yeah. dumbbells right there. But Bruh. check this out. Um, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's man. probably yeah, he was really his, strong on a bunch. You'll of probably shit, right? see. Yeah. He should feature. Man, he should feature that back extension. But maybe he. Maybe it's in his reels or something. But yeah. Either way, he's strong. It, he should. <sighs> we got to give him an Instagram lesson that. Um, yeah. You have to have up what you're known for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> him doing back extensions oh, went viral. I don't know if he. This is, this is just a squat, but either either way, um, front squat. Oh, oh fuck! It's reverse, but reverse that. Yeah, <laughs> but he. I mean, he lifts super hard. But if you could see the back extension, yeah, it's probably the heaviest back extension that people have seen. So it's it's yeah. gone viral on sport. Oh, oh there's I see a, one. There's I one. see one. One hundred ninety-two. Okay, yeah. Let's see that one. Let's see that one. Okay. Yep. So he's getting it on. Um, I like he picks it up from the floor. This, this is a good old. Ask, yeah. There's the good old Valor back extension. That's from our from our uh, our town. That company, yeah, and that's I, that's what we use. I try to find the one that. So here it is. On. Here it is. So he's doing like, the whole that whole piece doesn't just break. Yeah, Jeez, yeah, man. Um, Andrew, I think if you were to do um, a 45 that's degree funny. back raise with a PVC pipe and you just held it out. Um, like you're trying to do like a snatch or something like that, mm-hmm. I think your back would just go on fire. Mm-hmm. And, and I think if you um, paused it rather than like really did a ton of reps. I yeah, because th- that's something I, I did want to ask yeah. you about uh, ex- ex- like directly, Marcus, because like if, if if I do full range, you know, I get some back pain, mm-hmm. but like I get like nothing, 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 a little something in the middle and then nothing, nothing. So if I just, the, the reason why I discovered this because changing my son's diaper, I get lit up doing that. I feel. Yeah. I feel. If that, you just yeah. went on there and tried to hold for like thirty seconds with your arms like out, like yeah. either in front or above you, yeah, you would die. 
<laughs> or, yeah, I'll, I'll, your I'll back. give it a shot. Yeah, and I would, Most I would do something to open up the hip flexors mm-hmm. first, mm. do yeah, the back extension, idea. and then finish with the thoracic, and you'll probably be lit up. Mm. That's actually what I was going to ask you, Andrew. Mm-hmm. How often do you do work that lengthens your hip flexor? Because I see you do a lot of direct back stuff, mm-hmm. but do anything that puts you in massive hip uh, extension? Well, putting them on blast. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I can, I'm happy to say that for the past week, I've done it every single day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's just because yeah, the, the, my go-to coach, uh, Gary Scheffler, that's a part of my daily and night. So I do it twice a day. So I do it daily and nightly. The routine that when you guys were all in the gym, like, I'd say, well, I got some time. So I I did the whole thing, at, you know, in that moment. But yeah, it's like um, a, a minute each side is what it's supposed to be. And today I did a little bit quicker, but yeah, I'm doing that uh, twice a day right now. And I bet you'll feel a n- noticeable difference. Uh, I'm, you aren't doing that much before this week, though. I'm just oh, curious. No, of course not. No, so I think no. like this, like that hip flexor You're thing, because when through. Ben mentioned that, yeah. the hip flexor, like yeah. that's kind of like you, that, mm-hmm. the short hip flexor. Yeah. Once that, you do that. That's the way the, the podcast world works, dude. Like I get an idea or I, I hear an idea, I should say, and I get some advice and then it just kind of keeps getting cemented as more and more people come on. Yeah. And of course, I'm going to yeah. respect and, you know, take your advice. So like, I'm fucking, I'm excited, dude. I'm, I'm a little bit hurt right now. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, I can only be so stoic sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been telling them for After months now. Hour I'm like, I showed the Andrew stretch. the couch stretch. See, at least I knew. I knew. I knew. I knew. Oh, though. And, uh, God I mean, damn I don't it! Know. I know. I don't know. Hey, this is what I told. It hurts, man. You know, sometimes things just like they yeah. actually hurt. Yeah, you know? I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Look, if you. It, here it's like go. the parents so, been telling you something, yes. and then someone cool comes and tells you, yeah. and they're like, "I'll do what they well, do." What I what I to, <laughs> what I told uh, what I told the go to guys, I was just like, "Look, you guys came on the podcast at the perfect time because had you come when I was twelve years in pain, I would have been like, oh, that's cool, I'll try it,' and I would have gave up. I'm like, but fifteen years in pain, I'm like that's where I draw now the line. Ready. Where I'm you in pain? In. Back pain? My lower back. Yeah. Lower back. Yeah. Okay, you'll wow. you'll know years. so much though to help other people. Mm-hmm. That's right. I'm, you know, just think from everything you've been through Mm -hmm. by figuring that out it's the you know it's a blessing Mr. Infinity are you out of pain? I am like I told I was telling Ben you had tendonitis in your knee when you were young does that pop Um, up at all or is it you pretty good? Man I feel 100 I was telling Ben we just did a podcast yesterday I can like literally hop out the bed and go play a full game of basketball well we were just playing together and that's something you can't fake Mm -hmm. you can't fake what you look like on the court Yeah, you're either hot He's one of the quickest guys out there. That's the thing. You lose that like that bounciness, that agility. He was on my team. Yeah, we, we way too it. easy. <laughs> we decided we decided this Sunday we're going opposite team. So we'll I'll update yeah, you. Yeah. But last time he was opposite team, his team beat me. Mm. Game, went down to the That's went the down to the last right point. This is just a random play. Unfortunately, we don't have. We'll we'll put up more highlights. But his agility is crazy. Like you can't fake that because you actually have to get mm-hmm. into your knees. So he's like he gets low on defense too. You can't fake defense. You could be mm. a good offensive player hobbling around, mm. but to get yeah. low on defense and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, nah, so I, yeah, but I, I feel would, good, man. I feel like I feel like I like I got there and sprint with my sons, play basketball. Like, I mean, I think that's the beauty, man. When play, they say I know it's cliche, health is wealth, man. But I really truly feel like mm. that's I, I'm I feel blessed and grateful, man, to be able to just get out there. So man, kudos to knees yeah. over toes guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But uh, what about you? How you feel, Mark, man? You feel I'm healthy? I'm feeling really good, yeah. You, okay. I just had like a random shoulder thing that creeped up on me. I don't know what the hell I did or how it happened. I actually think I may have done something pushing the sled because it's the only thing I can think of. I just had a... Were the arms like out? It was just like heavy. Yeah, my arms were like tucked in and my... Yeah, yeah sometimes when you go super heavy, you can get, I tweak a little bit. Yeah, man. it almost yeah. felt like I... It felt like I separated my shoulder, but I don't remember having anything happen. I just woke up with uh, some pain in my, my shoulder. Yeah. Uh, running is giving me like these little like owies here and there. Um, nothing to really like sideline me or anything. I'm still able to do it, but... Just like little calf things and little things here and there. My body's just not used to it. How much so. do you run? You just started? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I run about three miles or so every other day, something okay. like that. So yeah, I'm just kind of getting rolling with it. But And that's super yeah, impressive. Been, it is I've been, impressive. Yeah, yeah, I've been feeling good. I feel amazing. You know, I'm in here training every day and everything feels awesome except for that, that one shoulder thing, but yeah. that's even getting better. Yeah, but honestly, that's crazy impressive. Look at your, go ahead and look at your top 10 distance runners or some top 10 mm-hmm. runners and mm-hmm. you're not going to see someone with muscle mass so right. if you have muscle mass and the ability to run i'd say you're doing phenomenal yeah man 
Yeah, what about you and Sing? How are you feeling? Oh, dude, I'm, I'm just I'm <laughs> Best just massively athlete excited, I know. man. I'm just Best massively freak. excited because we get people like you and a bunch of other people that come on the podcast. I'm always adding things in, and like this is like the most. Even though my, I'm not focused on my powerlifting numbers or where those were, but this is the most explosive, probably the strongest and resilient my body has felt in my athletic career, mm. right? And it's just funny because I'm not moving those types of loads that you'd see on a barbell, but the fact that my body feels so resilient and I'm so springy and I can just move, I'm like, and I'm continuing to progress, that's the exciting thing. How old are you? I'm 29. I turned 30 in September. Yeah, you're going to be one of the best. I mean, you already are one of the best all-around athletes on the planet. I mean, I've looked in. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Like, no I've, <laughs> I'm dead serious. I don't know about that, but I've worked I with. I've worked that. with a lot of athletes and even guys who make you know who have made hundreds of millions. What of dollars. What makes him a little different? You think? No weak links. No weak links. Mobile, quick, strong. You see, what I mean? that, it, that's tough to have all those factors. And with at the ankle, the knee, the hip, the spine, the elbow. Yeah, I mean. So to find someone with that few weak links, that much strength at every area and mobility, um, I mean, don't you think you could go like, if you had to, you could go in a pro MMA fight, I feel like. I mean, I, I feel like I could train for that. I mean, it's not something that I want to do, but it, it's something that I could do. That's why I right. like jujitsu though, because jujitsu is like dipping my toe into the, well, not my toe, but just like it's in martial arts. I'm massively like addicted to it and uh, i can scratch that itch without yeah. having to get punched in the face <laughs> <laughs> no but i think what's that, your goal with jiu-jitsu really cool. oh my goal with jiu-jitsu is like to uh compete and and wreck at like the top belt level so like i'm a purple belt right now i have to get to brown and black and i want a world world championship as a black belt okay. that's so, so cool but the cool thing again is you know it's one of those sports where number one with all the things that you guys are talking about as I get older, because this goal will only be probably be able to be realized between the ages for me from 33 to 40, right? But if I can continue building these skills in the weight room, and I've been lucky enough to have been training for a long time, which a lot of jujitsu athletes, they haven't been able to have a lot of weight training in the, for, for most of their career. I can focus on jujitsu, get stronger with this stuff, continue to be able to compete with younger guys mm -hmm. into my late 30s and be able to potentially realize that, be able yeah. to realize that goal. So that's what's exciting about all this, because you're 30, but this is like probably the best athletically you've been, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not ever, even, it's not even close. Summer. That's why it's I can't. <laughs> my favorite part of the week is our stupid little weekend pickup game that we set up. <laughs> yeah. we, we take it serious and stuff, but it's it's so it's fun like being able to like put out your best performance. But you're saying with the longevity thing, that's unique too, because I, that's what I noticed with Derek on the court is he has so much basketball wisdom. It's very hard to beat him whatever team he's on. It doesn't really matter who's on the other team because he has all that basketball wisdom but still can move his body around. So it's mm -hmm. like, it's not supposed to go that way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why with you, it could be, geez, when you're like 35, think how scary good you'll be. Yeah, you know? well, that's, that's when I think my prime might be, at, honestly. Same. But it's, it's great with all this stuff you guys are giving us because like, a lot of athletes, powerlifters, bodybuilders, et cetera, you don't have to do everything here, but if you add certain things in, sled is easy to add in. There's a lot of these smaller movements that are easy to add in yeah. that can help with athletic longevity. Yeah. You could stick in your sport for a few more years if you just add in a few things. Yeah. You guys ever heard of basketball? Basketball. <laughs> no. I think uh, Khabib uh, does it. The uh, Can you maybe um, try to look it up? Uh. Uh, it's tackle basketball. Oh, like oh full, my God. full contact oh. basketball where you're just like jacking each other up. sport? Oh, just trying to kill each other. Let um, me find it. It's just like done by the. I think he's. I think he's Russian, right? Khabib Nurmagomedov. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nurmagomedov. I've right. never heard of it, but that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. There's basketball. Trampoline. Is it? Is it like, on trampoline? I used to have somebody uh, like that back on in the day. Well, that one looks fucking dope. Yeah, it might be on a trampoline. I'm not sure if this is it or this is just something else that we <laughs> I, should be doing. I think that's just trampoline basketball. That's not. <laughs> I actually know that guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, I'm helping his brother with his knee. Let me see if I can find it then. Because oh, it man. basket brawl was in the. Oh you, my god! I think I found. Do you guys? Uh, do you guys <laughs> get in on. fights on the court? <laughs> oh, this. Of course, oh, the Russians oh, would do this shit. This, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're like. This, <laughs> oh, this oh, wow. like, they're like fuck dribbling. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how tiring that would be. This is. <laughs> I mean, how they're like fighting for position. Uh, He's on the just court. standing there. Go shoot the ball. <laughs> oh shit! They're, so, <laughs> oh my god. This is boxing, They're, MMA, and oh, basketball, man. football, all in one. Come on, ref. <laughs> wow, looks crazy. This has got to be a comedy Andrew, right is here. this in Russia? This is not. I, oh, 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 God. And one? <laughs> I don't know. They, they, I mean, 
I don't want to judge a book, but they kind of all look Russian, right? Yeah, mm. it's definitely this is a Russian thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch. Okay. He like okay. pinned the guy like off <laughs> off to the <laughs> side. I wonder if he got points for that. <laughs> Anyway, this is going to be the next progression of basketball, so you guys better be ready. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm about to retire. <laughs> <by the time>. <laughs> <laughs> Needs like, a toes program for basket brawl. You're like, I'm good. You guys yeah. uh, get into it on the court because, like you mentioned, <laughs> it, it it's intense. Like, so you guys, yeah, get pissy at each other. I mean, it's intense. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, we go hard, but we have that thing where mm -hmm. still the respect can, factor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just I like mean, how we do fitness, we believe strongly in stuff we work really hard at stuff but it's never gonna it's never gonna go over our respect for other people mm -hmm. that's the that's the king thing for us is that our respect for each other so that's what's so cool is we can so you might like you might think in your head i hope he blows out a hamstring but you're not thinking, <laughs> i hope he dies you're not thinking that far yeah, exactly. let me adjust this program a little bit <laughs> <laughs> he starts nah. limping down the court a little bit but it's intense man we can hate each other on the court but after yeah. the game then we look right. back loving each other you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's a fundamental there that even if we disagreed on a call even if he hits the game winner on my team it, you know what i mean there's a fundamental there that as soon as it's done so, i'm going over saying damn good job you know what i mean yeah. yeah it's so good when you play against each other a lot and you learn like what frustrates the other person <laughs> like what trash talking kind of works and like just yeah, yeah you just you just find the things that really bug people and you just keep doing them over and over again see if you can make them snap yeah. what's your sport man what's your sport mark Man, I just love I just love lifting weights. That's pretty much mm -hmm. me, you know. Um, I always loved football growing up as a kid, and I still like watching football. But yeah, I just I'm nuts about fitness. Yeah, you know, always, always uh, lifting, and always just trying to figure out new and better ways of of doing stuff. Any goals, like fitness goals, right now? Um, I don't really have any particular like I guess like large goal. I guess like uh. I'm always working on improving my physique, trying to make that like more well-rounded, make it in. better, dial it in. And I'm always, well, more recently, I'm just starting to work on mobility, flexibility. I just have never really focused in on that. And uh, so I'm, I'm working on some of that. And just trying to figure out how to be like more optimal, how to make my, allow my body to be as optimal as possible. Being able to recover from workouts, as I mentioned Earlier, I talked about, you know, being able to mitigate stress and be able to handle stress. I like to be able to um, do a workout that's really hard, difficult, multiple workouts, maybe multiple times a day, mm -hmm. and just have it like have almost zero negative impact on me, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Like those are some of my just kind of uh, immediate goals. And I would like to run a six minute mile, but I'm, I'm just... I don't really care when that happens. Like that could be like two, three years. Like I don't don't care how long it takes because when I do it, I want to be able to do it with proficiency and I don't want it to be like this all out sprint where it's 105% of my max. I want it to be like 90% of my max, that kind of thing. Just trying to optimize everything. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm not really like, I don't, I'm not a huge like, I do write stuff down a little bit here and there, but I, I just, I don't really set a lot of goals. I just, I just like to, I'm a person of action. I just like to take action and do, do stuff, do stuff, do stuff. And then once I'm doing something for long enough, then I start to kind of make goals that I feel are appropriate. Mm. Uh, that way I'm not, uh, that way I'm not forcing myself to do anything too soon. I don't mind things taking a really long time. Yeah. Th that's how we do it too. We don't, what's your measure, you know, what's your goal that it's not, there's not a certain weight I'm trying to hit. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's every movement. It's getting a little bit. It's just optimizing things in the way that you yeah. train, the way that you move. Um, so I think sometimes it's better that way when you're doing it in the now. You know, you're because you could also try to go for some specific goal and then mm -hmm. leave out so many important factors or get worse form in the attempt right. to get there. That to me, that gets into sport. You know, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And I and so, but the fitness that's that personal sport that all of us can have, you know? And so I think that's, I actually think that maybe the healthiest way to do it is to be going for that all around optimization of what intuitively feels right for you rather than just setting some arbitrary, like I have no fitness goals for the year, you know, but my body's getting optimized. It's the best I've performed on the court. I enjoy every workout. I look forward to every workout, but there's no lift this much, you know, that I'm trying to do this year or something like that. Just, all around optimize. Yeah, I agree, man. I try to just, I, I, I train just to feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to feel good. 
Yeah, but uh, but it seems like it seems like you're a visionary though, Mark. It seems like you gotta like you like to create this big operation here <laughs> and to like have all these products and have this gym and to be so successful where you are with your body and podcast, et cetera. It seems like you gotta have not necessarily a goal, but you seem like you just you have to have some type of vision, right? Or no? Yeah, you need a target, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't hit something that you can't see. So yeah. um, I've always had a goal to um, try to get this business all under one roof and look a lot the way that it does. And so once I, once I was already in business, that's when I started to set forth that goal, though. That's my point is that I wasn't like, try, I wasn't like, um, wasn't like dreaming something up that would never happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I was dreaming up something as my, as I was getting closer to some of my goals. So once I created the slingshot, once I started to sell them, and once I started to recognize, oh, like this is like a, this is a thing, you know, okay, well now I need a warehouse. All right, well, my goal is to not only have a warehouse, but it'd be cool if I had a gym in the warehouse. Mm. Oh man, it'd be cool if I had like a media team to help showcase the products that we have because but it wasn't until after i got into stuff that i recognized other things like i when i created the slingshot i thought to myself i was like all right i'm gonna make a lot of products and then that will tell my story and people will be attracted to the many different great products that i have that's the way it worked out in my brain and so i was like well to be like 70 30 like 70 percent towards making good products that are affordable for people. Um, and then 30% will be like marketing. And then as I've been doing it longer, I'm like, oh my God, like first and foremost, the product itself actually doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> Unfortunately, the product does not have to be amazing. It, it has to be something, but the marketing of the product is actually huge. So wow. over a period of time, I was like, okay, well, it has to be more like 50-50 if not anything, even being more slanted towards, because the, the innovation of the product, while it is important, it's not the most important thing. It's the perception of the product mm. that is the most important thing. You know, you can't have a hunk of shit because then people will rec recognize this thing's crappy. So you do need a good product. But over the years, I kind of came to this balance of recognizing that it needs to be more like 50-50. I need to have good products, put a lot of effort into having good products. And I need really good marketing to share with people why they might need these products. Otherwise, they don't know I exist. You know, Ben, I want to kind of I want to ask you something real quick um, because I've noticed this about the way you go about things, and it's something that I appreciate appreciate massively um, when you started sharing the information with us and other people. Um, whenever you, you talk about the things that you do or the, uh, the the processes within your training program, you're never an individual that's like, this is the right way to do things. You're never like, this is the only way to go about training the knee. Talk about Joel Seedman Immediately when, <laughs> when we talked about Joel Seedman, I think we did it on air, you didn't go and say, this is what Joel is doing wrong. Instead, you went and you said, this is what I like about what Joel's doing. And then you went to talk about, and this is what I do. You didn't go and say, this is where Joe's wrong, or this is what I disagree with, or this is why he's shit. You went and you <laughs> talked about the reasons and the things that this guy is doing pretty fucking good, and it's pretty great about his training program. The same with every, like, other people that we've, we've talked about, right? You go into, oh, this is a cool thing. This is a cool thing. This is a cool thing. And... Number first off, I wish more people within fitness, instead of trying to tear out other tear down other people's training protocols and training programs, they instead could maybe find something that they dig from it and maybe take away. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious, why and when did you realize that that is the way you should be going about things? Because there are training, um, not, not, there, there are there are coaches that you've talked about that you look up to who they don't necessarily even go about that themselves. That's not the way they go about things. You hear them talk shit about other training protocols, other training programs, the way other people do things, even though those people are at a good place. You don't do that. First off, super appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Second, ATG, when I made it, I wasn't trying to attach it to one thing. I was trying to take the genius of all kinds of areas. Mm -hmm. So I might even use things from someone who might hate me. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, So... That was right off the bat is that was my vision of ATG athletic truth group was just taking gems that help people from all kinds of different areas. So by nature, 
you know, that is my nature. Also happen to, you know, uh, internally, I like when I show up and people are like friendly and stuff like yeah, that. And so yeah. it, it sounds like way too simple, but it's just, I want things to be friendlier out there. So if I'm going to then go into those games of hating on people, I don't feel better at the end of that. You know, I only feel mm. time, bad those times I'm mean and I don't want to be living in a world like that. So over time, it, it definitely became my number one fitness belief was that my fitness belief was not as important as respecting people. So that's just something that's become really important to me. Mm-hmm. And if I can leave any kind of mark, it's not even going to be making someone go back over the sled. It's going to be respecting them even if they don't want to do that, you know? Um, I think it's the only way we're going to, as a society, you know, move forward. Yeah. So, yeah. but I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I just want to show, I just want to, I want to show up and be in a friendly world. I want to log on (laughs) on social media and be in a friendly world. I want, you know, it's, it's really that simple. You guys are the same way. Mark sheds light on so many people with so many different opinions. Mm -hmm. So I also do in terms of my mental mentors, I try to surround myself with people like that. So I'm, I've got it, you know, I've got it good with people like Mark in my corner and, uh, even within like ATG, um, I've never heard Derek hate on anyone ever. And uh, Keegan Smith, Australian, yep. he's the same way. Like, <laughs> we just want to be able to raise our families, you know, be in friendly environments, help people. So, um, if I think a lot of people out there probably feel that way, and maybe you just got to kind of get some other mentors around you that feel that way, because it mm-hmm. is easy to get it is easy to get sucked into that mm-hmm. and start getting into that fight and hating on people but do you feel better at the end of that because i feel like crap after that so yeah it's really helpful i think to get to encourage people to do some of the exercises that you're talking about because you're not necessarily saying like if you don't follow the whole program it ain't gonna work and this and that you're just saying look you know find something that you like to do out of some of the things that i offer what you said earlier actually was really awesome about pulling the sled backwards so there's a thing that could help potentially with the tendon ligament uh, growth. But we also need to figure out, because you can overload with the sled, you can get some weight on on there. And then also taking your body through ranges of motion. Um, and maybe those, for that particular person, maybe those are unweighted. But it's like, those are two simple things that anyone can carry. It doesn't matter if they're a boxer. It doesn't matter if they're a football player. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if they like doing cleans and jerks and whatever other movements that other people love to do, powerlifting-wise or, or anything else. It's like, find some time to do both of those things occasionally. And make sure your knees are healthy. Pretty simple. Yep. Yeah. What do you guys think, for both of you, the, uh, the, the bigger demon, I'll say, um, trying to discover or figure out why people's like or how to correct people's knee pain or getting them getting them to believe that they can reverse their knee pain oh i mean showing it you know and showing simple things they can go try and Mm -hmm. see if it actually works for them i think i don't think it has to be a leap of faith yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, i think people that think that's why that's why people so many people are respond to to being knees over toe guys. Why he has a million followers because he's leading from the front. Mm-hmm. And like I was telling Insema, you got so many people in this space that are just trying to sell a product, trying to sell a program, talking. I hate not only hate, but Ben leads and he shows you so automatically that's inspiring and, and giving people belief mm-hmm. like oh man this guy and he shows you where he came from I was 19 I had a 19 inch vertical to a 42 inch vertical and and I had these three or four knee surgeries so automatically everybody's just drawn to that you know mm-hmm. so uh and, and the same with me man like people see me as, at 43 and they're like man I'm 30 and my knees hurt or my mm-hmm. back hurts and that and that automatically it, it, I, I can imagine if I was 30 and saw a 43 year old, I'd be like, that would immediately give me a belief. Like, man, if he can do it, I can do it. And I mm-hmm. think that's what That's people- what motivates me. And mm-hmm. that's why I started seeing his approach to the ATG system and things that he would identify and want to do more. And then I, so the same process of being sold on something and then trying it, I've lived that in reverse by watching him at 43. Mm-hmm. We're, Sunday, we're trying to do dunks. But mm-hmm. what's the best thing Derek can do to get someone to want to do sled training? Dunk when he's fifty, <laughs> live it, prove, like like prove you know uh, go live it and prove it. But the right, there's nothing he can. There's literally nothing he could say that will get more people 
to try doing sled training, which Paul Quinn wrote a book about it. Louis Simmons is probably yeah, Paul Quinn has a book just on sled where he goes <laughs> yeah, where he goes of all kinds of gems to with a sled. Um Right? That didn't get sexy enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what we're out here <laughs> living and, and, and bleeding and trying to prove it. But there's there's nothing that he could say that would work better than seeing him. Like, if he can be as quick as he is now on the court at 50, God. it'll look like one of those videos where the guy dresses up, you know? <laughs> yeah, only yeah. it's real life. <laughs> is that Kyrie like, Irving? I don't, I don't know, but I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, But, like, seriously, like, if he can play basketball like he is now when he's 50, that'll get more people to try a sled than anything he could say. I just want to say like one of the things that makes the sled uh, so effective for people that maybe have doubts about it, they're not quite sure, is it's primarily all concentric training. There's yeah. not an eccentric component, uh, component to it. Uh, it's also not going to load, load your spine. So you're not, mm-hmm. you're not taking weights and, and putting them on your back like you might with a squat. Not, not that that's necessarily inherently unhealthy, but no, it's, it's good it's, in doses. It's, it's, yeah, it's good in dosages for sure. Um, and you mentioned that earlier with the longevity study of just having like pressure mm-hmm. definitely makes a lot of sense. Uh, basically, it's a message to your body like, hey, we're still doing shit. Yeah. You better still <laughs> you better still be awake yeah, down there. So it is yeah. helpful. But um, you can do a lot of exercises with the sled. It's primarily concentric work. That doesn't mean you're not going to get sore at all. It doesn't mean that there's no eccentric work to it, but it's primarily all concentric stuff. And so... People that are looking to rehab just about anything, your shoulder, yeah. your knee, you can get on there and figure out with different straps and handles, you can do all kinds of exercises on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. And yeah. we does, don't sell sleep. Does it uh <laughs> does it bum you out? Unfortunately. <laughs> does it bum you out when you see people getting knee surgery? I mean, I've been through it, so I know they'll come out of it, you know? Sick. So I don't even have Go ahead and get the knee surgery, honestly. What you eating I, over there in SEMA? I'm, <laughs> He's trying I'm to be hungry, quiet. You guys, I go even, ahead. Dig, I even, to do it off dig in on your Pop-Tarts. Are yeah. we going to taste test? Yeah. Yeah, 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 Tasty pastry. <laughs> yeah. I even muted your mic and Finally, it still was like I getting just picked <laughs> up by everything. <laughs> Shout out, tasty pastry. Yeah, so those this things is, are loud. So this is 20 grams of protein, five carbs. So it's not a... It's not a break in my diet, I guess. Right. Oh. Yeah. Only like 170 calories. It's going to be a delicious break. It's incredible. Good. I can just eat this in peace, not off the <laughs> Yeah. Seem how, do, how do you, hey Mark? How do you? Um, it's really good. How do you guys handle um, criticism or how to handle all the hate? Like social media, mm-hmm. is, it can be a monster sometimes. So do you just? Um, how do you guys deal with that? I think you know some things to think about. Like uh, <laughs> why are you laughing? When Seema? we're talking about. <laughs> Mark's the goat with that shit. We're <laughs> talking about we're talking yeah. about like uh, fighting, you know, or being mean to somebody. Um, you know, how how is it? I I like to try to think about stuff like how does this help? How does this hurt? Yeah. Like how is it helpful? Like is it helpful at all for Ben or for you to be calling out another fitness person saying my program's the best? Like how does that serve and help the people? Like think about the original reason why you got into doing all this in the first place. It has nothing to do with uh, fighting with me and Sema about proper squat technique. Like that's like the furthest removed thing. You originally want to help people, right? So I think sometimes we got to look at stuff through that lens. Uh, the, and secondly, I think um, when it comes to like these comments that you see, most of the time it has to do with what's going on in that person's particular life and doesn't have that much to do with you. Mm -hmm. It has to do with they're like frustrated about something and what you just posted came in their eye line. You know, they, they saw it on social media um, at a time where they just think it's wrong. They think what you're doing is incorrect. And I think that most of the time, most people are trying to do their best. And there's these little times where, Every once in a while, we won't do our best and we'll slip and we'll say something mean to somebody or something that's not. And it's it's in an effort to like draw attention. I think people want to draw attention to themselves because they want to feel uh, significant. Mm-hmm. They want to feel smart. So somebody will, will make a comment and say, oh my God, you idiot. I can't believe you just told people not to eat vegetables. <laughs> what that guy is trying to claim is that he found something that is valuable that he would like to share with people but he doesn't know how to communicate it mm. and he's getting <laughs> he's getting mad and frustrated at me about it and i probably don't really have that much to do with it or sometimes there's some people that follow um just to kind of get frustrated i'm sure there's people that follow you guys that are in you know they're 
they don't believe in a lot of the stuff that you do. And so they're waiting for you to say the wrong thing, for you to call the, <laughs> the muscle in the knee the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Like they're waiting for you to fuck up and be like, see, like I told <laughs> you, Ben doesn't know that much of the science, man. Look at that. I'm not going to trust. And then what do they do? They throw out everything that you say. And all, for, for some reason, there's no longer uh, any reason to listen to anything that you said when you may have said something wrong um, I mean, we all say wrong stuff. We all say things that we end up later on. We disagree with our own thoughts and, and <laughs> things like that, right? That happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people like getting on social media and disagreeing with you, I think there's a couple ways of handling it. One is to try to like kill people with kindness. You know, if you just say, hey, like, I'm sorry, just doing the best job I can. Catch you later or whatever. You know, there's that kind of stuff. Um, trying to explain something to somebody sometimes can be helpful depending on how depending on what they said i mean if they said something really irrational then it's like well you just got to ignore it and i think the third thing is to really just keep plowing forward you know for me like this at this point like the slingshot and some of the stuff that i made with slingshot it's so old that my i have i'm i'm six or seven uh products into uh, the supplement company that I have. So I, I don't feel like I have the time to like slow down and be like, hey man, I'm sorry that post hurt your feelings. Let's talk about your feelings. Like I feel like I don't have time for that. I am wor- working on trying to be as productive as possible and you know, always trying to work on the next thing. In, in my household, my wife takes care of a lot of stuff, just like you were mentioning your wife does. Um, and even just something like, I mean, my wife will do all kinds of stuff. She was like, taking stuff to the dump the other day because we're, we're selling a house and she <laughs> cleared out the house and she's like, I'll just do it myself. And I was like, well, I'll go with you. I'll help you. She's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you need to just stay you and you need to do your, your, your shit your that way. And I was G, like, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Seriously. I know. But so she yeah. has that much support for me because she knows that it's not great for me to be tied up in that way. So if I'm thinking about some comment that somebody made on social media, it just, it ties me up the wrong way. And it's not, it's just not productive. Yeah. 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 So what do you think about the uh, tasty pastry, Ben? I mean, it's, um, he inhaled it. Oh, did you finish it? Yeah. yeah, yeah he, it quick. Hey, he don't play around with food, man. <laughs> I, 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 like um, <laughs> I like to eat. I like to eat. Oh, wait, we just saw you eat something too. Hey, no, I'm talking about him. Oh, we we mm. actually saw him eat something. Oh, oh, a bite, a bite. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was nibble. forced. We didn't get to see it. Uh, um, there's no doubt it tastes really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Legendary They're, foods. Yeah. yeah so Amazing. you guys. You guys can head over to so I don't mess it up. Uh, EatLegendary.com um, and make sure you guys use promo code POWERPROJECT to receive 20% off wow. your entire order. Seriously, taste pastry. It's like 170 calories, 20 grams of protein. It's freaking delicious. It doesn't taste like a health food. It's That's one not of the even close. I will I'm, you know, challenge you guys. Put it up against like pretty much any protein bar, yeah. and it's going to have similar or better macros, and it's definitely going to taste better. So again, uh, eatlegendaryfoods.com or eatlegendary.com, promo code Power Project to save 20% off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Andrew, want to take us no, out of here, buddy? Sure, sure thing. <laughs> I think we crushed it. Yeah, thank you guys for checking out today's episode. Uh, please make sure you guys drop a comment down below. And, you know, we don't um, we don't beg for subscribers or anything like that. We just bring you guys amazing content, amazing guests. So if you guys aren't entertained by now, I mean, come on. So drop us a, sub- a subscription, a subscribe, whatever. And uh, let us know what you guys think about today's episode. And please make sure you follow the podcast at Mark Wells Power Project on Instagram, at MB Power Project on TikTok and Twitter. My Instagram and Twitter is at I am Andrew Z. And Seema, where can people find you? And Seema Yin Yang on Instagram and YouTube. And Seema Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Derek and Ben. He's a toast guy. <laughs> Mr. Affinity with the ones. Check out our book, ATG for Life. Yeah, we'll link that Amazon. down. We'll link it down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Peace. Appreciate you. Bye.